Welcome, one and all, to Happy Hour number 35, where I'm going to be doing Aliens 3. It's just me, the drinker, at the moment, because Dank's finishing up some stuff that he's got to do, and then he's going to join us as soon as possible. So I thought, fuck it, I'm not going to keep people waiting any longer, I'm just going to start the stream. So for now, for the next few minutes, you're just going to have to put up with me trying to entertain you. Anyway, how's it going, chat? Welcome to everyone who's joining us tonight. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a decent stream because, man, Alien 3 is a movie I've been quite interested in talking about. It's like the most controversial of the Aliens movies. Um, so hopefully we'll, we're going to have a good chat because Dank's pretty knowledgeable about all this stuff. Um, I know he's a big fan of the series, so uh, it should be a good one. Um, I guess while we're going, um, and since we've started, I know there's a few super chats that have kind of uh built up already so i'll maybe just give them a wee look and uh and do my best to answer them and if there's anything for for dankula specifically i'll just uh i'll defer it until he gets here so bear with me a second while i sort this out uh right here we go takes a break a few seconds for them to all load up uh, all right, here's yeah, super chats. Okay, so the first one here is from uh, Charles Hurst for fifty dollars. So thanks, man. It says I didn't really care for this film, but this conversation will be awesome. Have one on me. <laughs> thanks, man. I mean, hopefully it will be awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. That's for sure. Uh, Stephen Lanuto says, for "Hail Drinker." I was able to find Talisker's at my local shop. Nice one. It's a good shop then. Uh, a Game of Thrones edition and a Talisker Storm. Game of Thrones version was a bit harsh, but the Storm was quite nice. I'm a toilet duck padawan. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I like Talisker Storm. Uh, I've not had the Game of Thrones special editions because, uh, fucking hell, the, the show itself, season 8, just put me right off any version of their whiskey or anything like that. Anything associated with it. Uh, but, never mind. Uh, Stybeck B says, give me your top five movie, game, or book speeches that fires you up or even make you drop a tear. Star Trek not included. I'm a 40k fanboy. Deal with it. <laughs> uh, five of them. Fucking hell. Uh, first one's got to be the president from um, Independence Day. That speech, man. Holy shit. Like the music, the, the, <clears throat> the dialogue, the everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can't fucking breathe. Yeah, everyone gathered around to listen to it when they're all about to risk their lives, like trying to stop this alien invasion. Uh, it's just gloriously over the top. Awesome. Um, I love Al Pacino's speech from any given Sunday uh, when he's trying to get his team fired up to go out uh, one last time. Like, man, that speech is just absolute perfection. And it's so, it's so like relevant for people in life. Um, you know, not just football, but like any aspect of your life. You know, it's all a game of inches. Like every, like every moment of your life, every day gives you little chances to to get further ahead and to to succeed. Um, and yeah, the the way he delivers it, the dude absolutely nails it. So that would definitely be one of them. Um, what else? Rocky's speech to his son in Rocky Balboa, where he's talking about it ain't about how hard you can hit; it's about how hard you get hit and keep moving forward. Like that speech. Again, you know, so relevant for everyone for for their general lives. It's uh, it's a great one, and the way Stallone delivers it is just fantastic. So yeah, those are some of my favorites uh, of all time. Uh, well, here we go. I've got Dank on the the um, backstage, so I'm just going to bring him on. Hello, good sir. How's it going? I'm all right, man. What's happening? Uh, I didn't uh, I, I didn't know it was a webcam style yeah. stream. <laughs> Though, we want to see your but, beautiful face, mate. What are you doing? Oh, shit. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out how I can actually do this. Then I'll need to actually go and get my webcam. <laughs> right. In two seconds. I'll be back. Hey, boy, man. I'll do some more super chats while I'm just waiting here. Uh, what's the next one? Tuxenhausen says, Hail Drinker, last time I asked you about doing a happy hour with Gary for the film Dreamscape and your nips perked up. <laughs> Will the review happen soon? Uh, I'm not sure, man. Um, I'm going to be... Uh, on Friday night tights tomorrow night. Um, I'll talk to Gary about it then and we'll see if we can get something sorted out. Uh, also from Chucks and Housen, uh, with Cobra Kai returning soon and Terry Silver returning as Creasy's best mate, do you think he'll be juiced to the gills and be jacked? 
I don't know, man. I've not seen that actor be in anything uh, in years. So I have no idea what he looks like or anything. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully, like he's uh, he's going to be prepared for this. Um, I know the guy himself was actually a bit of a, a karate, um, you know, expert. Not maybe not expert, but like he was definitely into it. He wasn't just like um, acting in the movie. Like he was properly trained in it. So hopefully, some of that comes across, and he's still young enough to kick a bit of ass because that'd be awesome. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, Nigel Milliken says, Drinker, please consider reviewing Midway. Uh, despite Roland Emmerich's reputation for butchering the historical accuracy of his films, he really gets it right with this one. Nice. Um, I, I haven't seen Midway yet. I've heard pretty decent things about it. And man, I miss like good old fashioned World War II movies. Uh, so yeah, could be a good one to watch. Uh, Unhinged Entertainment says, Drinker and uh, Dunk Up discussing the last Alien movie. <laughs> My bishop is at attention. <laughs> uh, Maniac 5000, salute critical. Right. There you go. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Uh, Burns Cash gave me two two pounds, so thanks, mate. Uh, Eddie from Outer Space says, "Sup, Alien Three is good, and everyone else is wrong." Uh, I don't know, man. We'll find out in the course of this stream, I think. Um, Stuart Arbery says, "Money for Tatiana. Keep wanting to love Alien Three, but always end up beaten down by the end." Yeah, you're not the only one, man. Uh, individual moments of brilliance that don't quite coalesce. I think that's a pretty good way of summing it up, actually. Yeah. Um, Stico nineteen ninety says, "Drinker, you handsome man." Not guilty as charged. Uh, I want to start drinking whiskey. Any tips on how I should go about it? Well, you put the fucking drink in your mouth and you swallow. It's easy enough, man. Uh, I was thinking about getting a set, but I've come to you. Um, right. I mean, all seriousness, if you want to get into whiskey, then you probably want to start with something um, fairly mellow, like the Speyside malts or something like that, or, um, yeah, Highland malts, but not like the, the Isla ones because they're a bit they're smokier. They tend to have a lot more peat content in the process of making them. So uh, that's sometimes hard going for people. Aye. So you want something uh, a bit smoother. So go for a space side malt to get you started. Hey, I can see you, man. Yeah, bonjour. I, I, I completely forgot, man. My head's completely up my arse. Like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, man. It's good to have you on, though. I uh, I know fucking I've, I've had a people people tweeting me for a wee while and like I've even seen some fan theories going. Has anyone ever seen Drinker and Dank in the same room? <laughs> <laughs> Shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Uh, and I like you know, like you say like people had been and said to me like oh, it'd be great to have you and Dank do a stream together. And I was like fuck, I'll just ask him and see if he's up for it. So I'm glad you were. Um, Nah, I'm down for it, man. I'm, I'm always down to chat about Alien because I've I've seen like one and two multiple times, two the most, but three is one of the ones that I haven't watched as much because it didn't really do it for me. Yeah. I think it's the same for a lot of people, man. It's um, you know, I rewatched it just the other day for this stream, and uh, it's still as I remember, like it's just it's a, a relentlessly fucking grim dark depressing kind of movie um and it yeah. just doesn't let up you know everything's hopeless everyone's gonna die it's horrible people in a shitty place getting killed by a creature and uh, i i think they you know i sort of get what they were trying to do you know take it take a step back from all the action-packed stuff of aliens because yeah. you're not gonna be able to top something like that and maybe bring it back more to the roots of just like this one creature kind of stalking people in a in a you know, a dark place with lots of corridors and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I think even, even with the way it was filmed and, like, the sort of the set design and the costume design and everything, like, see how, like, Alien and Aliens, they felt like you, you would have no idea what decade they were from. Like, every, I, like, a lot of people think that those movies were made much later than they actually were because yeah. I think they were really ahead of, ahead of their time. But Alien 3, you look at it and you just immediately go, this was made in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> like you just you just know immediately like i know i know what you mean man in. uh yeah. and I, you know for a movie that was made um on a decent budget and maybe four or five years after aliens uh the special effects are absolute shite 
Like they look really cheap and um, yeah. and just, you know, honestly, that's, it's, that's CGI man, that CGI I, alien, like oh Jesus, yeah, th that's it. Because you know, I know obviously when you've got a guy in a rubber suit playing the alien, you've got to be kind of careful how you do it. It's got to be very quick. It's got to be in the dark, so you don't see too much of it. But it works really well. Aliens proved that you can do that kind of thing really well. But then yeah. this. They obviously wanted the, an alien that was fast and agile, and they couldn't do that with with a human with a person. Uh, yeah. and, and and so it's it's this just like crappy combination of CGI, and it, it almost looks like stop motion animation. It's that jerky. It, um, it does, yeah. It's like, do you remember like the original Mortal Kombat movies? It's like that style of CGI, <laughs> yeah. but, it just, it, but it does just look terrible. <laughs> it, but, but like, I, I think that having that sort of limit placed on it back in the original alien movies is what made them good because see how you know the whole horror thing where that the less you see of the creature the scarier it is because you only see little fleeting glimpses of it on the screen well the original aliens movies had to do that out of necessity because they couldn't have the alien on the screen for too long because then everyone would go that's a cunt that's it <laughs> like, like so that, but the, that helped them though because oh we can only have the alien on for a, a wee flash a wee split second a wee a wee three frames is all the aliens going to be on there but that helped like with the fear factor of it whereas with this one the alien had like a lot of screen time but the well i think that was probably its downfall because you just got your an eye full of the shit cgi absolutely and there's a there's a few scenes where it's on the roof um, like clinging to the ceiling and you see it and it, like it's lit by fire or something so it's in full view um, yeah. and it's obviously cgi and it's just fake as fuck like it just you look at it and it's like that's like something from a sci-fi channel original from like the late 90s or something you know what i mean it's like that level of, of, of kind of crappy special effects uh, it just totally takes you out of the film and it's such a shame it does. I think. I think it's because we we were like a lot of people were used to the the nice natural like you know the the puppetry and the animatronic sort of alien or like the big guy in the suit. People were used to that from the original Alien movies, and then in three they kind of just done away with all of it, and it just I don't know. It it, it really took a, a lot away from it. Like I've, you've heard the heard this phrase used before, where it was not a bad movie, but it was a bad alien. Aye. Yeah. I, I think that that sums it up pretty well. Like, um, you know, the big issue that people have with this film as a follow up to Aliens is, you know, killing off Hicks and Newt because they would yeah. have been inconvenient to the plot. And it's like, you know, straight away you've just wiped out the ending of that film and you've kind of, yeah, you, you've kind of undermined all of that, everything that Ripley went through to save Newt. It's like, ah, she just fucking died, like off screen, Aye. basically. And that's it. And then it's, and then it's fucking a. Uh... Uh, it was it was kind of weird because Rip, Ripley they they messed with her character like a wee bit. There was a few things that I sort of noticed. Where obviously ever since all the way through Alien Two, Ripley was hell bent on getting rid of the aliens. Like fuck the aliens, fuck this, fuck that. Like I have to warn people. Like I don't. A part of me doesn't understand why Ripley didn't just immediately right away go. There was aliens. There was this. There was that. I need you to scan my chest. Like see, I don't know why. Remember when she's telling the doctor to open up Newt's chest? And yeah. Ripley, for some reasons, being very aloof about it. Like, a part of me is like, why is she being aloof? Like, Ripley's usually right away, everyone needs to get to safety, fuck the alien. But then a part of me goes, is it because this was a company owned place? Like, Fiorina Fury 161 was owned by Wayland. I well, you it, see the Wayland Yutani symbols everywhere. Um, yeah, so a part of me thought, sort of thought, is she keeping her mouth shut in case she's worried that someone sends a message back home and then the company goes smashing, and like, yeah. <laughs> which, <laughs> which which they did, they did, they, they, they fucking got there immediately. Yeah, I, yeah. what's well, interesting, I they get they finally get the response really when she does that bio scan of herself and it's like, I there's one inside you. And it must have uploaded it to to the company website or whatever, like in what whatever they use. I was, I was I, a part of, the part of that that made me laugh was uh, they the, they talk about it in the film where they go, yeah, a supply train comes every six months and all that. And except, and then as soon as like they get all the aliens here, the company is there in literally like two hours. Ah, <laughs> man, like they're fucking there. But like, go go back to what you were saying about like it did. Like another thing they changed about Ripley is she wasn't very like her focus was never on like relationships. There was never a love story really in Alien. There was like the sort of 
the background sort of semi hint at it. Like, see how you've heard the whole theory that in the original Alien, uh, that apparently like Ripley had a sort of on off thing with the captain. And all that shit. That's that's a theory that people threw around, and then there was obviously a little bit of a love interest with Hicks. And yeah, but it was very, it was very much like uh, you know subtle. two people that uh, are yeah. it's subtle. It's hinted at, and it's like you know with Hicks, it was like you know he's a protector for her and stuff, and it's like someone that she feels she can trust a little bit more, and you know maybe it might have led someplace, but obviously it doesn't. Uh, well, that's this one. But she, yeah, she goes into Alien, she gets a fucking big shot, a fucking smack off the doctor, and then goes, oh, hello there, Tywin. And yeah. fucking, <laughs> and fucking pumps him. Like, like, I, I don't was, know, that, that didn't feel very Ripley. That didn't feel, well, I don't know. If you think about what she's done and all, like, she's just buried Newt and Hicks, right? And she's watched Newt go through a gruesome autopsy. Um, you know, she's oh. stuck on this horrible prison planet. There's really nothing for her to look forward to in life or anything. And... Aye, she's just like, yeah, Charles Dance, yeah, you'll do. I'm gonna fuck because it's um, been a while for me. It's been a while for him as well. Like to see, I, I, I shouldn't laugh at this, right? But it was a funny scene. You know how the the attempted rape scene? Yeah, yeah. But it was it was the bit where <laughs> it was the bit where they pull her over the railing and the guy stands behind her and he's, it's like he's psyching himself up for it. And then when he, he puts the goggles he on, puts the goggles on as if he's about to go witness me. <laughs> Because you even see him go like, ah, like he's gonna take a run and thrust, <laughs> like fucking. <laughs> and then, then your man comes in and beats them all up with a pole. And he's like, I just need to educate the brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan, yeah, Dylan was the man of the match for me in this movie, like for sure. Um, he's just he's cool, like he, he you know, he's definitely got that edge to him, where um, you know, yeah. he's, a, he's a convicted rapist and all that, and he straight up tells Ripley that. And there's times when he looks at her like, yeah, you know. Well, we can make an exception for you. You know, he, he, felt like an, he felt like an alien character. Aye, but yeah. he, he, you know, he comes good, and ultimately, he's a decent man, and he, you know, he sacrifices himself to to help kill this thing. And uh, yeah, ah, just really well acted, well drawn character. I really like that guy. No, I, I enjoyed him as well. It's like there's loads of you can go into the background of a lot of other people as well, but there was one thing that I sort of noticed. I don't know if it was a scene where I blinked and I missed it because I know that lots and lots of other footage were filmed and a lot of character deaths were directly filmed and, like, obviously the other cuts. And then remember how the, the accident that happened when they were laying the trap with all the flammable shit? Aye. That that was sort of used as a big excuse for if the character if you don't see the character after this, then assume they died in that explosion type thing and, and it was like uh, but one thing that I never understood remember the wee guy that uh, got I forget his name but he gets sealed away in the bed in the straight jacket and he had the face covered in blood and they suspected him of killing the guys like what right, happened Paul, McGann, to Paul McGann's character I yeah that was the part where I'm sort of like wait a minute did he get resolved because he wasn't in the tunnel laying the flammable stuff so what happened Aye. to him like I, I, I don't know I, I don't know if I looked at my phone for two seconds and I must have missed it or something, but how did how did his story get resolved? It didn't, um, and that's exactly what they did. They they just, you know, their their cover was like right, there, you know, a big explosion went off, loads of people got killed, and if you don't see that guy again, you can just assume he got killed there. I always assumed yeah. he got killed in the, the the infirmary because he was strapped to a bed, and the alien fucking came right into the room. So you kind of assume it would have just killed him as well. Well, well I I watched that scene because I, I watched that because that has the the, the famous. That that famous like fucking still of like Ripley like that with the alien like that's a famous bit. So like I always make sure to watch that part. The alien just immediately leaves. Yeah, and that's why I'm kind of like, what happened to him? I, I see someone in the chat. Golic is killed when he lets the alien out the vault. That's that's in the director's cut. Yeah, like, that's, yeah, yeah. That that is in the director's cut. But, but and obviously, that, that is yeah. Because generally, I'm I'm not a huge fan of the director's cut either. Like I just feel like it's a longer version of what you get. Um, but the the Golic sort of subplot is better dealt with there because it's like, ah, yeah. you know, he he thinks this is some kind of mythical creature or something. He almost worships it, and so when they seal it in the toxic waste vault, he lets it out, and then it kills him. And it's like, okay, fine, you know, that's a resolution for him at least. It's it's because he thinks it's a god and stuff like that, and it's sort yeah. of like people were going, oh, that's stupid, and it's like, well, you need to remember that Golic is literally clinically insane. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. So like that that kind of explains it. Men's mental illness can do things, but yeah. But, 
But the, I, I did. I, personally, I kind of prefer the director's cut a little bit. But like, I still, I still like the original theatrical as well. Because like the dog alien, like that's what it get called on the toys as well. By the way, the dog yeah. alien. Dog alien, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, it's it's. I like I was saying before. I, I think the director's cut it does expand on some of the stuff and it maybe gives you a bit of resolution to a few of the subplots that are, are left a little bit open um but it just feels kind of bloated and long because it, it's yeah. kind of a slow movie anyway you know what i mean yeah. like it's not it's not a quick film and like the first half hour 45 minutes is, is pretty slow it's just ripley kind of piecing together what happened and you know burying newt and all that stuff so it is a slow slow kind of movie the, the the that part though where they bury you like see that scene where basically like it, it's i don't know it's, it's i'm trying to explain it I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to put it into words it was really there was a big sim there was a lot of symbolism and everything in that scene where the guy says like the very lovely speech as they like throw like uh Newton Hicks's bodies into the furnace and they're having a nice wee funeral and it's sort of that's the end of them but then it's cutting to the dog lying there with its chest going because the alien's about to burst out and I don't, I don't know why that scene was just i like that scene i mean it's a, well, horrible, the, the, it's a horrible fucking scene but you know what well, i mean yeah, yeah i mean you know seeing a dog dying is like pretty shit in any film like it's not well, fun and, all, and, and, also, and also seeing a 10 year old's body getting chucked into a fucking furnace yeah yeah that's not nice either um <laughs> But I know what you mean. Like the the dialogue's good there. Like it's a good monologue that he gives. The soundtrack's very effective. It's very poignant and emotional and all that stuff. That it's a great performance by Sigourney Weaver because, you know, whatever the shortcomings of this film, I think she gives it her best no matter what. Yeah. Um, but I it, it's um, it, I think the the actual line you get from him is like you know for every for every death there's a rebirth and there's a promise of a new life and then you know yeah. intercut is like the, the the alien being born out of the dog and you know that's you know it's it's kind of on the nose but it's it, it's pretty effective at the same time you know yeah I, I i did enjoy like that scene and that's the, the thing is see how the whole like throughout like alien comics alien games like all the other movies and everything that get made the whole the xenomorph takes on like certain traits of whatever its host was. It was Alien Three that started that. So see how like the the dog alien was really really fast, really agile. It wasn't as big as your yeah. standard xenomorph that would come for a human, but it was really fast, really agile, and it would run on all fours. Whereas xenomorphs would sometimes stand up on their hind legs and like run that way. Like this one would constantly all the time be on all fours, and that everything throughout the comics, like you've seen like. Whenever a predator gets a face hugger on it, and the chest buster has the you know the little predator things and everything, that was Alien Three that started all of that. So, like, I know that, that everyone wanted for a long time to retcon Three, but that would kind of mean possibly they would also be retcon in that because I know that that's what Blomkamp planned to do. Yeah, I, has, I wish yeah. this film had gotten made honestly because I love the ideas behind it. Oh no, so they are because there's a, there's a comic like I forget what one it is. I can't remember if it's Earth War or Outbreak or Hive, but it's one of them, and I've got it. And it was basically, it was sort of I I think that I, I can assure you, Blomkamp's read it. I can assure you that he's absolutely read it because it was basically they get picked up by the company, they arrive back on Earth, you know, Ripley doesn't just get her pilot's license taken from her this time she gets put in a fucking prison because like not only did you blow up the nostromo you literally fucking blew up like lv426 <laughs> uh, hicks gets a honorable discharge from the marines against his will and then when newt is basically saying newt starts saying all the stuff like we went to the bone ship because the company told us <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> told us to do that, and Wayland Jutani went. Well, this child is clearly very distraught and has PTSD. <laughs> we're just going to put her in. We're just going to put her in this insane asylum that we own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I'm sure she'll be yeah. fine there. I, you'll never yeah. see her again. That was that was also that was also the Alien comic that really creepily predicted the Twin Towers as well. Really? Oh, yeah, shit, yeah. H Hex is sort of like walking through the town. He's like he's after the Marines. He sort of became this alcoholic that's dressed like a noir detective and uh he's totally he looks up to where the twin towers should be and he starts talking about a terrorist attack that destroyed the towers and this was years before 9 11 happened 
Jesus. As well, I, that was a, that was a creepy one. But the whole thing ends up coming about it is Ripley escapes. Like Nick, like Hicks thinks that Newt went to like a foster home. She didn't. She's in an asylum, and that's how where the uh, they go into the asylum to basically rescue Newt. And like Hicks just goes in and just shoots the place up and shit like that to get them out. That's why when I saw the concept art that get leaped from Blomkamp's, and it's like Ripley with bombs strapped to her and Hicks like armed to the teeth. I seen that scene and I went, Are they, is, is that what they're doing? Is that the plan that he had going in there to like rescue Newt from the insane asylum? I don't know, but it's, I was just seeing lots of similarities between what Blomkamp wanted to do yeah. and uh, and that story. But you know, he's absolutely yeah. a guy that I would uh, trust to do an alien movie. You know, the the style of direction that he's got, and you know the um, you know if you look at things like District Nine and stuff, that would fit well into the the alien like universe, the, yeah. the aesthetic of it. Yeah, I think I think yeah, obviously like stylistically, like I I think he would stay quite true. Yeah, because I know that he obviously he's very well known for using like his this hyper realistic cgi like in district nine and stuff like that and it was the same same the same type of stuff they used in elysium and chappie and all that as well but like uh i think that maybe even though we were just bitching about the shit cgi in alien 3 like would that level of cgi work with alien like i think obviously doing like a sort of a, i mean aliens are kind of machine like sort of i don't know if it would work I guess well, well, that's a problem. We can theorize all we want, but we're, we're never going to fucking know now. I know, <laughs> and, and it's the same with this movie as well, where it's like you see the original draft of the story um, that the the first sort of script that they produced, and it was going to be something completely different. It was going to be like um, a, a two parter where the first one was going to focus on Hicks, and it's like he gets separated from Ripley, like uh, some weird terrorist group gets their hands on uh, alien eggs and they're planning to release them because they're, they're wanting to like make demands and stuff and then that's another yes. alien comic by the way that, yeah. that storyline yeah that's a, that's another one of the old comics yeah and then you know he has to take them on and then at the end of that ripley shows up and then they have one big epic um you know movie the fourth one that was going to resolve all of it uh and that could have been amazing like i love that concept it's, it's so yeah. much more interesting than this like grim dark bleak you know hopeless kind of movie that we've got yeah it's it's like i did like alien alien what alien the first one for like the suspense the horror and stuff like that like i really i really enjoyed that and then uh, the aliens aliens like the second one it was it was very cameron it was <laughs> like but yeah. I, I but I enjoyed the absolute show that because you had the you know the standard scary horror and then after that you had your horror but slash like action movie and everything and like I, 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 loads of people agree that Aliens is the best one out of the whole franchise like yeah. that one's excellent I fucking love Aliens I've seen that one so many times uh, there's not many people that would argue on that one I mean I, I definitely because I did uh, Alien with uh, with Robert Meyer Burnett like uh, and we had a good chat about that and you know really came to appreciate like the the subtleties of that film and like the suspense like you say and just how they made great use of of every kind of technology that they had at the time like the, the late 70s man you know and it, it just it looked great even today um, yeah so, I, I like I like how back then it's the old like green dos screens yeah. and all that stuff man. and they're like yeah this is this is what computers are going to look like in 2152 yeah. <laughs> and like, but but that's the thing that's the thing is like even they've still kept that like in the movies and that's now part of the alien aesthetic that's why when he had prometheus and all that stuff as well and they had like some technology like that to sort of try and keep with the aesthetic but then they had all this futuristic stuff i was like no i don't want that that's no, not you want it to be you want it to be really like simple and 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 uh like robust and effective because that's what they would want in in spaceships and stuff it's designed to be like used by you know folk who are uh, like working class they're space truckers you know so yeah. it's not meant to be like, like you know magical holograms that you can just manipulate with your hands and all that yeah, yeah. alien technology you look at it and know that it has four kilobytes of ram yeah, <laughs> like, you almost but, expect modem noises when they're like trying to connect to the yeah, network. You know? Exactly, but that's but that's part of the aesthetic. Like that's the thing. Oh, data technology. No, that's part of the alien aesthetic. That's what we like. That's what gives it its theme. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely give uh, credit to the first movie for that. Like you, you see the yeah. the bridge of the Nostromo, and it's it's not this sleek kind of Star Trekky place at all. It's all just like old fashioned switches and stuff, and like everything's just very solid, and it looks like it's been used for decades. You know, it's just I love it. I love that look. Uh, uh, and it, scrap scrap heap challenge. I exactly I like yeah <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 the alien did create like its own aesthetic. Like, see how when they made the game like Alien Isolation, it had been a very long time since we actually had a good alien game. Alien Isolation stuck like a hundred percent true and pure to like that aesthetic, the old technology, like everything, like all the technology, even though they were literally in space on a space station, all the technology looked like it came straight out the seventies and eighties. They yeah. didn't budge on it, they didn't shift on it, and that ju- that just made it better. That makes it feel like an alien game. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, you got to respect it. Like, um, the, you know, with Alien 3, like, I have to say, like, even right off the bat, like, you know, when you get that first scene on the Sulaco, um, yeah. and there's like an alien egg that's just randomly sat there um, in the middle of the cryo bay, it's like, you know, straight away you're thinking, how the fuck did that get there? Did the alien yeah. queen just go down there and lay it or something, and we just didn't see it happen? There's loads and loads of different theories, right? And the. Uh... The, the theories that people have, right, is people were saying, like, one of the theories is, oh, the company put it there. Why? They would just take it back to Earth. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. why, why, would they, why would they do that? They would take it straight back to Earth. So it wasn't the company. People were saying it was the Queen, right? But the Queen, like, you've seen her chasing after them and, like, aliens. Like, she came up the elevator, like, she was chasing down the corridor, and, like, she came out of the, out of the drop ship, and that's the bit where she fucking, like, yeets. Bishop with her tail and then rips him in half and everything, which is a, which is, a, <laughs> which, is, which, is which is a fucking excellent scene, right? It's horrible, but it's an excellent scene. Well, it's just milk yeah. spraying everywhere. It's great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like, and then that's when you get the amazing, you know, the the uh, heavy loader like fight scene and everything, which is just iconic. But basically, when you saw where the eggs were located in the intro to Alien Three, there was there was no other aliens. There was some people have said, or oh, maybe. Maybe a xenomorph jumped onto the dropship behind the queen and just sat there like holding the eggs and stuff like that. And this is, I thought that was kind of silly, but some people sort of thought it was a little bit viable because maybe the aliens knew the hive was about to blow up. And what matters first and foremost is the survival of the hive. So the queen maybe like got another xenomorph to like stick a couple of eggs like on the dropship as she was jumping on, but. Like when did that happen? Does the timing work out? I don't think it does. I think, I think it might have just been lazy writing. Just there's two uh, eggs that managed to find their way on the to the Slaco. How did that happen? I don't worry about it. I, yeah, that, I think that, was, that <laughs> yeah. was the extent of it. I think um, yeah. I, I've heard people say that Bishop done it. You know, he oh. he um, like went down into the nest before bringing the drop ship down because it seemed to take him an awfully long time, and he, he took that up to the Slaco. Um, for you know transport back to earth because he seemed to be very interested in the face huggers in aliens so maybe like you know he did have a bit of an ulterior motive uh again it's pretty sketchy and it's pretty debatable how much time he would have had to do all that i think like you say they just you know they needed to have an alien movie and so they just like flung it in there it's like ah it's just eggs there don't question it just move on yeah you know? that that did feel like that did feel a little bit silly where it's just uh, like, yeah. Uh, but that's the thing is, like, see if the company had detected them there, they would have rerouted the Salako straight back, like instantly. Yeah, yeah, they they would have they would have brought it straight back right away. That, that's why the the company theory, like, that's not true. The company would be like that fucking nice, and they, just like Fury and a Fury, they would be there in two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Man, like, give, give, gives me that. The the, the also yeah. there must have been more than one as well because. One of the facehuggers impregnated the dog to, to produce the alien, but another one impregnated Ripley. Yeah. So it's either that or like they, they can somehow do it twice or something, which they couldn't do before. But yeah, know, that's, a, a facehugger does it once and then it dies. Like that's, exactly. That's the that. uh, as soon as it as soon as it imp- imp- impregnates someone, the facehugger falls off and dies. So uh, there was two, and I I know that you've seen the facehugger coming over Newt's. Newt, say, uh, what was it? Cryo chamber. Cryo chamber. Ah, uh, you see the first face hugger come over her, but it doesn't look like they got anywhere near her or Hex. Now I know that they checked inside her, but they didn't check inside Hex. I know that Hex got impaled, 
whenever they crash landed, but very it could have very well been Hicks. But they believe that see because like there's this whole magical science that's never really explained about how face huggers can keep keep their host alive. They keep the host alive, right? But then uh, that's how uh, Kane managed to survive, like you know, in space with a face hugger on him, even though it managed to get through his uh, space helmet. But like, uh, it turns out that in those little, you know, the wee flappy pads that you see at the side, just looks like two. <laughs> there seems like two big fucking balls hanging off the face. Yeah, hugger. I... You see them puffing in and out as if they're puffing air, like or whatever, into their their host. But then I'm like, how does the face hugger know what its host breathes? And also, how have you just got like this oxygen factory, yeah. like and, and like and your and the and your two little ball bags hanging off the side of your body? I mean, that's that's just some that's another thing. And throughout the aliens universe, that's just been a whole. I don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> like type thing. But ah, it's one of those things you can't analyze too much. But yeah, like I can totally get when it's brought um, when they bring uh, you know came back into the the ship and okay there's a there's a breathable atmosphere so it obviously understands well this is what they breathe so i need to supply this to him so i but like when they're out on the planet's surface it's just you know that can't support life so it's like how does that keep them alive that length of time yeah uh, just you gotta just let that one go i suppose hi <laughs> that is a weird one like there's loads of other stuff that does like get explained like through comics and stuff like that like apparently like aliens communicate with almost a type of sort of telekinesis magnetism type shit but apparently like that, that was the thing as well is that aliens it was a lot like ants because the original concept for aliens was ants they were going to be ants just giant ants and then they hired uh geiger and he just went i'm going to make them big rapey phallic things and they're going to rape people i need their, I need their head <laughs> to be long like a big dildo and then, like that was that was it. he made all his work like really phallic and all that man and then it's like so what does the alien mean to you it means rape, rape. <laughs> and he goes we're going to and they're like oh yeah when the alien like uh implants its embryo and he's like use the term impregnate yeah that uh, man like guy guy got was a I don't know, man. I, he definitely had some sketchy hard drives. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, like, know, there was there was yeah. definitely a delete my browsing history order when he died. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there definitely was. Yeah, <laughs> but, is it, but that's the thing is, even though even though like obviously like the the sexual imagery is in overdrive with a lot of his work in the way he designed the aliens and stuff like that, but you're also glad he did because the alien hives, the bone ship, you know the. The space jockey, as they were called before everyone knew that they were the engineers and everything. Like, all that artwork is beautiful and stunning. And it, it really, again, it gives Alien its own theme. And everyone, like, I like the stories with the space jockeys, like the original stories and theory. See how it's all oh, they're actually the engineers that come to planets and like populate them with life. And if that life doesn't do what the engineers want, they come and exterminate it. Like, <laughs> Basically, the original stories of the space jockeys were was they were just an intergalactic FedEx. Right, <laughs> man, that was. Well, they were just delivering a load of cargo. It was like ah, fucking alien eggs. I'm sure that'll be fine. Well, it was. It was apparently in the original. I, I can't remember this. It was apparently there was going to be in the original script when they managed to somehow analyze parts of the alien computer that the alien itself, the, the xenomorphs, the eggs were classed as a bio weapon. Right. They knew it was a weapon. Like and it was a weapon being transferred to you know for fuck who fucking knows where, and everyone. But then some people, cause of Prometheus and all that, people started to theorize like, oh, you know, maybe instead of using the black goo, engineers would just dump a couple of eggs on a planet and then leave because they knew that those three eggs would no problem be able to wipe out all life on that planet, and they yeah. could. Yeah, the like, xenomorphs are fucking like nature built them to be unstoppable. Yeah, I mean they're relentless and. You know, for me, like, I was always happy with not knowing what the space jockeys really were and where they came from. You know, when yeah. you see them in, in the original Alien, it, it's a mystery and it's just interesting. And, it, you know, um, this idea that this super advanced species that's obviously capable of creating this incredible spaceship, you know, it's, uh, the technology is probably light years ahead of the, uh, the Nostromo or anything like that they got taken down by these things and they got brutally killed by them and straight away it, it sets it up like fuck man if this can kill these these amazing aliens that are, are super yeah. powerful what's it going to do to like these humans 
you know, and that was enough for me. I didn't need to know where they came from or what their their plans were or anything like that. They were just this mystery to you know that really shows you that aliens part of a larger universe. You know. Yeah, like the. the there is lots and lots of stuff like that. Like I know some of the comics like sort of introduced like other alien races who knew of the xenomorphs and everything, but like some of them were like, Oh, that's that's an old wives tale. Those those, those don't exist. And then the whole planet got fucking overrun. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but I did I did I'll admit like I did like the original like mystery of like the space jockey. I did one thing that I, I didn't like, which which really did annoy me, is how you know the helmets that they've got on, like the original space jockey had, like the big, almost kind of like an elephant trunk. Yeah, thing. yeah. But when you looked at it, you could see right that's part of the skeleton. That's clearly its skull. And then Prometheus and all that sort of went, "Oh no, we just happened to make our helmets look like that." Like it is yeah. a fuck off. So like, fucking this. lame. And then when yeah. you see what they are underneath, it's just like uh, it's just basically a big guy in a mask. You know, yeah, exactly. like a really shitty looking prosthetics. It's like, no, nah, what it was before was interesting. It's like know? fetal alcoholism stung by bees. Yeah. Like that's, yeah, I basically... <laughs> like that's, that's what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> we are the greatest, mightiest race in the universe. Like, I all right, pal. <laughs> yeah. You take the short bus to school, don't you? <laughs> Man, the, win the windows in your house are spotless. <laughs> 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 but, but like I that that kind of wasted that a little bit, man. Like I thought that whole the helmet thing was stupid. That that really bothered me. But like yeah. uh, I did sort of like that oh, they were just a intergalactic FedEx and shit went wrong. And then I liked all the theories of see how they found a hole in its chest in the original alien. There yeah. was a, there was loads and loads of fan theories of well what happened to that one. And there was even other theories as well that says that maybe the maybe the space jockey wasn't delivering the eggs. Maybe he got hit by a face hugger, didn't really know what happened, got on his ship, went to travel, it fucking burst out him while he was traveling, and then that turned into a queen and laid the eggs. But we know life or hosts to like use to make a hive, like the everything just perished, but the eggs remained because eggs can hibernate for fucking centuries. Yeah. I think you you could construct any one of a dozen different theories for it, and it's all yeah. fine because you don't know in the initial movie. It doesn't give you enough to work with. Um, yeah. But like I say, it just creates a, an interesting sort of mystery for you to to think about, uh, and I'm fine with that. But um, I, I said, the, another thing about Alien Three is it didn't really add much to like the alien lore itself. Like you didn't really find out more about the alien which can kind of be a good or bad thing like we said you know the mystery makes it a lot more interesting but then a lot of people are kind of like well i'm, I'm watching this to get some answers like type thing it, 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 i mean it gave you that idea of like they can mimic well they'll take characteristics of whatever thing that they've impregnated yeah. which totally makes sense because like they'll take whatever life forms it rewrites dna thrive. It rewrites yeah. your DNA. Like whenever the whenever the embryo is inside you, it actually takes your DNA to build itself. So that that makes yeah. sense. And, and it obviously it wants to be well adapted to whatever environment it's going into, and so it'll find whatever species is is doing well, and it will take characteristics of that. So aye, it makes yeah. sense there. Um, but aye, generally speaking, it doesn't give you much more. It's just another alien that has to be killed. Um, yeah, and. Yeah, some of the the stuff like I know we're we're kind of jumping about with the movie, but it's just kind of how we're we're tackling it. But uh, you know, towards the end, where they they're like, you know, the the plan to seal it in the toxic waste chamber didn't work out, and everyone got uh, incinerated. So yeah. th their new thing is like, right, we're going to put it into like a lead chamber, and we'll pour molten lead on it. Um, and so we've got to like lure it into this this big um, trench almost. And when we get it in there, we're going to fire up this piston thing that's going to push it right into the lead chamber, and then we can just drop the lead on it. That whole sequence where everyone's got to like lure it into the right area, and everyone's running about, and there's doors getting closed, and you see bits and pieces from the alien's point of view. I had no fucking idea what was going on. I didn't no. know if they were getting close to their objective, or if the, you know, they were still just a million miles away from getting it sorted. I didn't know. Because you can't know, it's just this confusing maze of corridors, you know what I mean? Yeah, the plan was a little bit stupid as well, where they did the whole Scooby-Doo, let's split up, gang. 
Uh, like shit and everything and it's a case of what is the alien obviously is trying to get people i mean it came it came into the mess hall and did the you know the famous dragging them up into the vent shit like you know it came into the mess hall and just the guy who was the leader squeezing his little ball it just janks him oh, right Andrews. up into the vent yeah and just i love i love that guy awesome i like he was I don't know, he annoyed me a little bit. Like he just seemed like a pure posh cunt and it's uh, he was acting like a big manager, like the CEO of a Fortune five hundred company, and it's like, mate, you're in charge of twenty rapists and pedophiles <laughs> <laughs> on some back, backwater lead plant that literally the universe has forgotten about. <laughs> he's, a total, he's a total jobs worth. I think it's just the uh, way the actor delivers it. Like, this is rumor control. Here are the facts. Um, <laughs> I just love when he gets dragged up into the vent, right? And and like just a big shower of blood comes down, and everyone's staring at it, like, holy fuck! Like, I can't believe that just happened. Like, they're shocked. And then one guy just goes, "Fuck!" (laughs) (laughs) But like that, the the alien obviously doesn't give a fuck how many of you there are, right? So why don't all of you just go and wait? Just go and wait all in the one area. Then when the alien comes in, you all dart out the doors and shut the doors behind you and seal it in there. They they could have done that because what another thing that annoyed me is seeing that little area. There was literally like. I think it was six or eight doors in that little area. It's not like they couldn't get out. Whatever entrance the alien comes in, you go out the five other ones yeah, <laughs> and shut, yeah. shut the fucking doors behind you. Like that, that was so annoying. That that was fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it was a dumped one. I, I, again, you know, like I was saying, you know, when you don't really know how near or far they are from succeeding in whatever they're doing, like you can't really get invested in it because you don't know what's going on. You know, yeah. with with uh, uh, you know, with aliens, you understood what the situation was at all times. You know, when they're having that battle to hold the ground at, at uh, you know, in the med bay. You know, when the aliens all break in, like you totally yeah. get what they're doing. It's like, oh, we got to fall back into the air vents, you know, so we can retreat again. You understand what's going on, but with this, it's just like I, I, I'm just seeing a bunch of really shitty camera angles of, of guys running away, and it just it looks just looks confusing you know yeah it was that was very messy and you you, you did very quickly lose track of what was going on and you know, yeah. i just i i didn't really enjoy that scene and then it was sort of it was almost sort of like the same thing a little bit with the big fire explosion scene where you had no idea what was going on and that was the thing is you, they never even sort of really did a tally of who they lost i think they mentioned like one or two sort of notable characters and then you were sort of sitting there like, well, who died? Who's dead? And there's one point where you think one of the guys dies, but he turns up later. And you're like, oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Guess, I, I guess he's still alive. Then that part was confusing as well because you had no idea who was left. Yeah, yeah. It was just a way to thin the herd, I think, because you know yeah. they had 20-odd guys there. And it's like, okay, we need to like pare it down a little bit for the final <laughs> sort of confrontation. And also some of these are big names and they're getting expensive. <laughs> Right, so let's get, <laughs> let's, get, let's get them the fuck out. There's good <laughs> actors there, the way like you've got Pete Postlethwaite, you've got like Paul McGann, like these are these are decent guys, like they know their yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know, there was but... like, there was one thing as well where you noticed that like I was I love watching old movies and seeing like younger versions of a person, but it's they're not really known for the movie. Like I, one thing that I did actually just last year is I sat down and watched oh what was it the big series Band of Brothers. And I'm yeah. sitting there watching it going, Jesus fucking Christ, everyone's in this. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone is in this, man. Like, there's fucking Tom Hardy, you know what, man? Like, well, but he's a, he's a wee boy. You know what, man? Like, aye. It was, it was like that, but like, I'd, one of the things as well is, that, oh, fuck, was it just last year, the year before, that you lost fucking, we lost a pawn for Aliens 2? Aye, oh, man. Yeah, aye. Al Matthews, aye. I ass, assholes and elbows. That's yeah. it. That's it. <laughs> Another some place in fifteen people shag it. <laughs> it was just like uh, Another day in the glorious core. I love the Marine Corps. And then was, he makes jokes as well when he went, There's some colonist daughters that need us to rescue them from their virginity. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind he of guy you'd, you'd follow into battle the way because he just knows what he's up. He knows what he's about, you know. Ah, exactly. He was a. I loved him. He was a fantastic character. I, I of all out of all the characters, there were some that were the wee like sort of side bits and everything who were obviously supposed to die because you weren't really given time to get invested in them. 
and everything like Va- like Vasquez's little you know boyfriend and all that as well. He had a fucking horrible death, man. Even though it was only two frames, where you see his skin. I, I when I, I remember as a kid, I, I paused that scene just so I could look at it. I was like, oh fuck, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell man <laughs> no nah, like that's i don't know it's like there was some characters obviously that i i really enjoyed i forget i'm i'm absolutely terrible with names and everything but but i'm gonna call him black preacher man i liked him he was really good and his like sacrifice at the end as well like even though even though he said like as soon as he met ripley apier went you you don't want to know me sister and yeah. oh man you know i'm a murderer and raper raper of women yeah, and all Dylan, that. Is, Dylan, his name was Dylan. Yeah, uh, no, I liked him because he obviously was basically saying to her, like, I'm scum, don't come near me. But then at the end of it, he like he sacrificed himself to save Ripley and make sure he hold the alien in the furnace as long as he could so that they could drop the lead. But the lead part, I think, was just a really fucking dumb idea because, uh, I mean, he'd already set the alien on fire at one point as well, right? And fire obviously is extremely hot. Molten lead is not that hot. It's not no, that lead hot. will melt quite easily. Like yeah, uh, yeah, molten lead is like not that hot. So that's why when the alien sort of like jumped out, I was like, "As yeah, well, of course it did." That's kind of dumb. And then and then a nice a nice cold shower is what kills it. Aye, yeah. it does set that up a wee bit because like you know you get the the bit with the fire early earlier in the movie and they the set off the spoon. Ah, you see the bucket just yeah. Like, uh, so you do get that, but it's like I uh, it, it it felt like a bit of a desperation move, you know, like we couldn't think of anything else. But um it, what makes me feel bad about that scene is like <laughs> he's holding the alien in place. And you think, you know, you need to you need to just pour the lead right now and like end it for him. But it's like like it goes right until he gets fucking ripped apart and killed, and then Ripley's like, I pour it, pour the lead. Uh, like he could have like, done that a wee bit earlier and spared the guy all that suffering, nah. No? Yeah, the alien's like ra- like smashing its tail into him and everything. It's got his kidneys in one hand and his liver in the other. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> but, but he's still sitting there shouting words of encouragement. Aye. <laughs> oh, man, as, as he's getting completely fucking like torn to shreds. <laughs> oh, you hear him really go like, ah, oh, is that all you got? Yeah, <laughs> so it was pretty badass. I did, I did like that for an ending, but who was... And then they basically, obviously, the part with the company coming as well, like Bishop Bishop Wayland turns up himself. Like, I just thought, thought you'd feel good about a friendly face. Yeah, yeah. Oh, know. man, like, so you're, you're still the company. <laughs> I know, <laughs> if, it's if, like... If anything, it being the real you makes it worse. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what is that going to show Ripley? It's like, yeah, we've got this, this like, copy of the, the robot that you sort of befriended in the last movie, uh, pretending to be your friend now, so trust yeah. us. That shows that we're definitely trustworthy, you know. Um, it's when uh, Aaron just hits him with a fucking wrench and it takes his ear right off, and it's yeah. like hanging off the side of his head. Uh, it's what, like, what, what, what was his nickname again? Was it thirty-five? Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Because uh, uh, that was his IQ. IQ. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, man, though. He's the smartest guy in the fucking movie because, like, when when they they're coming up with this plan to like lure it into the lead mold, he's just like, "Nah, fuck this, I'm out. I'm just gonna sit in the infirmary and just wait for everyone to show up and rescue us." And it almost works, you know. He gets he gets rescued. They don't kill him. If he hadn't if he hadn't hit Bishop two with the the wrench, he would have been all right. He would have just gone home. He would I uh, would have been fine. But like, I, again, I was gonna say I don't know what he expected, and he's like, "I'm surrounded by nine men with pulse rifles." Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, I've got a spanner. I'll have, I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll have a bash at it, and he, he get gunned the fuck down. So I mean, you know, he lived lived up to his name. Eighty five. I, I love that. <laughs> I, I love the guy that because um, <laughs> I love how everyone treats him like shit. You know, there's a bit where he's like, uh, you know, I'm not one of you guys. Like, I've uh, I've got a wife, I've got a family. You know, I've got children. I want to get home to them. I don't want to like get killed here. And uh, fucking Dylan just goes to him. I nobody gives a shit about you, eighty five. You're not one of us. <laughs> <laughs> just nails him, fucking stone dead. 
he he was even though he was like technically the second in command well then he became the first in command after your man get dragged into the vent i love how like at least like the original guy people kind of had a bit of respect and a bit of camaraderie and everything with him like they had a bit of respect for him as soon as he died and it was 85 that was in charge everyone was just like nah fuck this but oh fuck fuck you fuck yeah. you, you little fucking spazzy <laughs> <We're not gonna laughs> listen to you, no. yeah exactly <laughs> It's just uh, throughout the film, anytime he opened his mouth, everyone was just kind of like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the, the actor, like when he first signed on for this movie, like he was told that his character was going to be really intelligent, like he was going to be like a, a posh guy, um, just out of his depth that way. Um, yeah. And, and they, they changed him to the fucking the dumbest guy in the crew, basically, just because, like, uh, it, that was what they they wanted from him, but I was pissed off about it. Apparently, really, um, that I didn't know. I've not seen him in much. Like I know he was in, he was in like the first few minutes of the Phantom Menace. Like he was on a ship that got blown up right in the first scene, and I've just yeah. not seen the guy in much else. It's weird. It's kind of neither, faded out. Neither have I. I've not seen. I've not seen him in anything. I, I didn't notice him in the Phantom Menace. Actually, I didn't even notice him in that. But who who was the one boy that was remaining? The one at the end, forget Morse. his name. Morse, Morse his name that was. was it. There's yeah. actually a book that's written, not written like the written by Morse by the character Morse about what happened to him like after he got brought back to Earth, and he he gets slapped in an insane asylum as right. well. The whole thing. I seen a, a giant alien monster like the face huggers burst out your chest, and the company were trying to take it, and it's just you know as they're putting him in the straight jacket and putting him the you know. Wailing Jutani going, the man's clearly out of his mind. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, he's a he's a criminal that was like on some prison colony far away. That can do things to a man, you know. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll take care of him. <laughs> I think that's the solution for everyone. Then they just all get put in insane asylums. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. They, Make they, sure they, they get do, the help. And the thing they do that all the time. Like, bear in mind, like Wailing Jutani isn't even a mega corporation. They're like an ultra corporation. They have, they own like everything there's so much stuff that they're in charge of like you know alien the alien universe is pretty and cap but there is still somewhat of a government that wayland yutani is quite scared of which is why they still try and keep everything like really secret and like you know don't let them know about what they're doing but like this is the thing is like they plan to use the they pl obviously plan to use the xenomorph as a weapon so they were going to have to announce it at some point. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. It's, the, it's the Xenomorph Model 2 or something. You know, like, it's the latest <laughs> thing in alien mega kill technology. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the UN and NATO are like, where the fuck did you get that? And I don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> it's fine. Don't ask us any questions. It's weird. They're very much the umbrella corporation of, like, their, their time, you yeah. know. Like yeah, they're just messing with shit that they can't possibly control, and it's just every time they try and use it, it's just going to result in mass casualties on every side. Like so I, 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 the problem is with that with the company, right? Even though the company has lost trillions of dollars, lit literally trillions of dollars, like they lost so much because of this alien, you would think that they would just cut the losses and go, "It's not worth it." Apparently, every time it happens, it just makes the company figureheads think to themselves, wow, this thing's really powerful. We want it even more now. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck me. Just cut your losses and fucking walk away, man. No, totally. It, it's very much like that that whole Jurassic Park thing where, no, Jurassic World, should I say, where it's like, oh, we want to use dinosaurs so we can like send them off to war because like, oh, raptors would be amazing at killing people. It's like, no, nah, man, they're, they're fucking uncontrollable animals that are just going to, like, kill your own side. And aside yeah. from that, they're, they're, they're really shit in a war. Like, if they're up against people with guns, they're probably going to just get blown up. Yeah. You know, like, like the, the colonial marines, as much as they, they get overwhelmed by the aliens, like, they, they kill a shit ton of them. Yeah. You know? Although that, that was one of the things as well, is, you know, one of, one of the... I, I, I spoke about this a little bit on Twitter. Like one of the themes that runs through Alien a lot is mankind's hubris. Basically, the, comp the like the company trying to control the xenomorph and get its hands on it, despite failing over and over. Because but Whale and Jutani are used to being able to control everything at their will. So why not the alien? They think they can do it, but clearly they can't. And then there's also like even though I love this scene 
right? Where it's like, <laughs> where it's Hudson and he's given that out. We got tactical smart missiles, <laughs> shot, <laughs> shot in the house, pointed sticks. <laughs> that man, like, and then, and then you've got Vasquez doing that. It was a wee, a little bit cheesy where she goes, I just need to know one thing, where they are and all that shit. And yeah. it is all the Marines, hoorah, like fucking type of shit. And like, they don't listen to Ripley. Ripley's warning them, like going like, I hope you're right and everything. Like she's saying all these things, like don't underestimate them, blah, blah, blah. And the Marines give it all the hoorah fucking shit. And then in their very first encounter with them in the atmosphere processor, they get fucking slaughtered. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, lose like over, all, over half the crew. Yeah, because all their their um like their technology and their weaponry, they can't use it properly because like of where they are and all that, and you know the the aliens like uh, evade their thermal scanners, like everything that they think is going to keep them safe, it all works against them, and that's you know I I, I think it's meant to be some. <laughs> It was, it was the bit where they went into the atmosphere processor, and then they just imagine hearing that in the radio. Uh, sorry, guys, you can't use your billets. I, like, <laughs> great, I will just I guess I'm going to die then. <laughs> and it's the, it's the bit where it's the bit where like the aliens are coming at them, and they just start like opening fire, and then the commander's like, "What are you doing? Stop shooting! Yeah, S- sit what? there and accept <laughs> your fate." Who's firing? <laughs> God damn it! Who's firing? I love that no one's listening to him. No one's like, he he did redeem himself. What was he his name? Mor- was it Morgan? Uh, uh, Gorman. 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 Yeah. Gorman. I. Uh, uh, yeah. You always were an asshole, Gorman. <laughs> <laughs> with him with a fucking grenade with Vasquez. Yeah. I don't know that. He he did redeem himself a little bit, but he was he was an absolutely useless shite. But that's the part that didn't make sense. Well. The, the company can sort of use the company doesn't exactly control colonial marines they are a branch of the government you know just the same as like any other you know like the army air force etc the colonial marines are a branch of the government so yeah. i don't understand why they sent the most useless commander like even when they're, they're going in they're going oh how many how many combat drops and he goes uh two <laughs> including this one yeah <laughs> and all the marines are like what <laughs> yeah, Man, fuck. I mean, I, it could just be that something like that was just sheer bad luck. Like they got lumbered with a, a shitty, you know, lieutenant who's just not experienced or whatever, and yeah. that's just how it goes. Um, but I, it's like that combination of different factors that just takes away all their advantages, and then they're they're just left fighting for their lives. I, as far as I understand it, it was always meant to be some kind of metaphor for for conflicts like Vietnam or whatever, where you. You go in overconfident, thinking that your your superior firepower is going to save the day, and that you find yourself, you know, up slapped against... around by by a bunch of rice farmers. Exactly, yeah, like <laughs> something you just didn't didn't predict, you weren't prepared for, and you end up like in the fight of your life as a result. And that's that's what the movie kind of uh, represents as like, um, like hubris, exactly like you said, on the part of like uh, the military. Yeah. You know, they, they can overcome anything, and they they can't. You know. Um, but yeah. I, it's like they obviously had learned something from that because when you see right at the end, you know, the, the guys that come in with the pulse rifles, they're all decked up in armor that's meant to protect them. I guess it's meant to protect them from like attacks and the acid blood and it's, stuff. I, it's, I, that, and that's why when I seen the white overalls that they were wearing, apparently someone said something there, but apparently there's a special code that actually gets used. It's a special type of like plastic coat and it's called a BF something and like basically in chemical labs and stuff like that they have special containers marked like that to say this is acid proof like you can use this to store acid apparently right. some similar markings were on the white overalls like so basically like whale and jutani actually did come kitted out they brought a cage as well, the one, the one, the bit that made me fucking laugh, man. Did you see the guys coming in with like the long things with the the circle wire on the end that they use for stray dogs? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> good luck, pal. I yeah. fucking have at it. Is like, is it like this is your first day and you're the guy that they're all playing a prank on? I you're not bring yeah. that, mate. I <laughs> <laughs> send send we scrub in first. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> God. I mean, fucking hell. Yeah, I just love when one of them shoots Morse as well for no reason. Just shoots him in the leg. I fucking pans him through the leg, but then Bishop like panics and goes like, "No, stop!" like that because he's so terrified that something bad will happen to the fucking alien embryo. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, you know, when I think about that scene, right, it, it's kind of a shame because it's obviously meant to be really poignant and emotional. Like, it's Ripley sacrificing her life, you know, to, yeah. to end this thing. Um, and it, it just always felt so unnecessary when the chest burster, like, explodes out of her while she's fallen into like a pit of molten you know steel or whatever it is um and she's got to like grab it and hold it in place like you little fucker you're coming with me yeah it's like, oh, you didn't have to do that man it's just like too much i know as I, I don't know a, a part of me is sort of thinking like does it add to the scene i don't know like people would have came up with theories going did she really have one in her or did she kill herself for no fucking reason right <laughs> like that i don't know like I did think it was sort of there was a wee bit of like sort of symbolism in it because obviously in every movie it's been Ripley versus the alien that's been our nemesis that's what she's been trying to destroy she even teamed back up with the company to try and destroy it even though because the only thing she hates more than the company are the xenomorphs for killing her crew so I think like the alien busting out of her and trying to escape basically like and Ripley holding on to it as she's fallen in, that basically made in every situation the xenomorphs have always been the higher power. But in that situation, Ripley was the one who was the higher power who'd grabbed the alien and the aliens screaming and panicking, like trying to get away. But Ripley's <laughs> the one fucking holding it, like fucking dragging it down to its death. So maybe maybe that, you know, maybe that was a wee bit of a better explanation possibly i don't know i'm yeah. shit i'm shit at putting things into words no I, I i get what you're saying i think that's like her final act was one of like you know taking control over these things that have like boss lady yes queen yes <laughs> slay queen uh, yeah. but don't you know that um you know the aliens movies they're all political and it's all about like um you know dealing with um, the the this, the issues that are unchecked today, the inequalities of today. Oh, uh, like, uh, see, the, see the amount of people that were arguing with me over that, and they, they were saying, "Yeah, see how this like one scene where it says crew expendable. Yeah, that means socialist utopia. How? Yeah, how, oh, man? Man. Come on now. It's like it's like yeah, okay. Let let's look at those two seconds and completely ignore the rest of the fucking movie. Then, will we? Like Alien One was just a fun horror was a fun yeah. horror where the company was like the side bad guy. But this was before a lot of lore. You didn't really know much about Whale and Jutani. You, they were just, as far as you knew, just a soulless corporation that didn't care. You know, the crew expendable type thing. And that was as far as it really went. The original Alien was just a nice horror. It was a great horror. And then Aliens 2 went a bit more into the lore and you got to see how the company acted and how it treated people and all that stuff. And that added to it more. But they were trying to say, yeah, it's against capitalism. And it's like, uh, yeah, evil corporation. Like That's like saying because they made a guy bad, like a bad man, they're trying to say men bad. Or like, here's a female villain, that means women are bad. <laughs> like that, yeah. The usual, like, I'm going to project like my obsessions onto this franchise that's got nothing to do with any of this stuff because I just, I need it. Like, that's, that's what gives my yeah. life meaning. It's, um, it's the, they, inject, they have to inject their politics and a fucking everything man like yeah and I, I liked all the memes where everyone's like no the, the crew expendable scene and get Waylon Jutani's bad and blah 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 and then it just had a guy going ha ha smart gun go brr there are certain movies where I already you can draw like we have been drawing like some meta meanings from Alien but then you look at you're looking at Alien, and whenever I watch it, like I'm sort of like I want to see aliens getting absolutely ripped to shreds by a by an M1 pulse rifle. That's, <laughs> man, that's, like, the, that, that's yeah. all you need in life, man. Honestly, like I, never, that. I, I didn't, I don't want to like I, I never like walked out of like the cinema or anything after seeing it and all that and going, you know, that movie really got me thinking about the problems at the border. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. like no, nah, no, nah, that's that's not what it's about. So that yeah, it doesn't really fill me with joy for like an aliens TV series. Like, um, I, Christ knows why they why they're even making it in the first place. But I, I just you know. there are, there are parts of me where I I have zero faith in anything that's getting made in the modern day. It's it's weird. Yeah. Like, a part of me is going like, is that because everything has got shit, or is it because I've got older and I'm doing like the movie tv series version of that's not music like yeah it was know? different in my day 
<laughs> in my day, you could say the N word on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I, you know, I've spoken to, you know, so many people about this kind of thing, like other people who review movies and all that, and you know the. The opinion seems to be fairly the same. Um, you know, movies that are made nowadays are, by and large, dumber. They are laden with with like modern politics, but it's really clumsily implemented so that you know it just becomes like a sounding board for whatever they're they're. Well, you, you, you can know. tell it. You can tell it's forced down. It's not a natural part of the story that can like, or contributes to the story. It's just been like duct taped on there. Yeah. Exactly, and it, it, <clears throat> the result is it sucks all the fun out of everything that you're watching. You know, yeah. when I've when I've uh, done streams like this where we've talked about older movies and we we watch things like um, Beverly Hills Cop or something like that, where it's just fun. You know, it's not trying to push an agenda or anything like that, um, and it's it's irreverent and it's you know it, it uses the N word, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But it does it like unapologetically, and it's just a fun experience as a result. And you just you don't get that nowadays. You know, all that enjoyment is sucked out of things. That was Tar- Tarantino was actually. I watched a little bit of him on Rogan the other day, and he was talking about it. He says that the eighties were a really rough time to try and make movies because there was a lot of Puritans in Hollywood. They wanted. Like, if there was going to be violence, it had to at least be cinematic and artful and all that stuff. Whereas. Tarantino's Tarantino, but it's like I want I want a man to cut another man's ear off while dancing and singing to "Stuck in the Middle" with you. You know, man, and like, but Hollywood were like, blah blah blah, no, 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 you can't do that, you can't do that, and everything. But he went and did it anyway, and that actually caused like a turn in the types of movies you could do and the types of movies you could make, and people got a bit braver and a bit bolder and everything. And like, you were even getting retarded movies that were like that. Like, see, this was obviously much later on, but do you remember? Do you remember Crank? Crank, like, crank, oh, fuck yeah. crank, Both of their movies were amazing, man. Such a retarded, dumb movie. They are brilliant. <laughs> they are yeah. such fucking good movies, right? But like, that's the type of stuff where movies, you could tell that that movie was very aware of what it was. It was aware it was dumb and it celebrated it. Whereas now you're getting movies that are clearly trying to be serious, but they're coming off as like dumb, like dumb and yeah. stupid, where it's like, you didn't like crank meant to do what it did like you you didn't mean this like but that's how it turned out anyway i still want to know what was in that fucking surgical box in crank too like, uh, <laughs> like what the fuck is that that's okay. <laughs> I'd, I'd, my, my favorite scene is in crank one where it's got fucking chester for lincoln park when he gets like the epinephrine at the hospital yeah, <laughs> the memories on the left, and then he goes, ah, "What do you mean you took a full syringe? You were only supposed to take a fifth of the syringe." And you see him just powering up, and as soon as the left door's open, he just goes, "Ah!" And like sprints out. Ah, <laughs> oh, I love that scene. <laughs> and it's him it's... fucking sprinting down the street to a punk cover of "Silly Rabbit Tricks Are for Kids." Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's when he's got to shag his girlfriend on a racetrack as well, and he's like really struggling to get it going. And I think a bus full of Japanese schoolgirls just like that, the, the race. The racetrack was the second one. The racetrack was the one. second one, and like <laughs> look, the hot the horse jumps over them, and it's just got a giant boner. <laughs> and, like, and then the first one, it was the bus. He couldn't get it up because he had stage fright because everyone Aye. was watching. And then a bus full of Japanese schoolgirls <laughs> pull up, and that sort of. That sort of like for some reason is like him eating a sensu bean and he just immediately gets his energy and starts banging up in the middle of Chinatown. And everyone's and just like me. applauding it stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fucking like they're all cheering for him and all that. Like, ah, oh. like oh. movie like that, that's the thing is like I like movies like that because they are very aware of what they are. But now you're getting like a lot of modern films, like even I'm not even getting enticed in. Like, even if I watch trailers. And stuff like I, I've I can't tell you the last movie like last trailer I watched and I thought oh fucking hell yeah I'm gonna watch that like I sit and watch trailers and I'm just like I look shit yeah that looks um, absolutely I, terrible 
and and especially when it's movies that you know either it's a remake or it's like a continuation of some franchise that you used to be fond of. Like I just approach them now with dread because I'm like, how yeah. badly are they going to fuck it up? Like how how much are they going to disown like the the characters and all that stuff? And it's just I'm terrified you know, of the new. I'm terrified of the new Alien series basically going like that. Do you know how hard it is being a gay black man in the colonial Marines? Yeah. Let's, <laughs> It's like I'm, I'm terrified of shit like that because shit like that contributes nothing to the story. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. See, when shit like that's like completely fucking shoehorned in, and you can always tell it is. You can always tell it is. You know what I mean? Like fucking what was it? What was it that someone? What was it that someone said? Like despite making up just ten percent of the population, homosexuals account for over fifty percent of all TV and movie characters. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, <laughs> it's just something it's just a trend that i have noticed over the years no absolutely <laughs> just just watch anything from the bbc man honestly like that is uh that's yeah. to the point where it's on i i actually think there's somebody there that's subtly taking the piss out of them but they just don't know it like they've I'm gone so over the top with all that stuff like it's just i'm, I'm, counting, I'm counting down the days until <clears throat> we get a, a reboot of uh, Braveheart, but William Wallace is played by like fucking Jamie Fox. Yes, <laughs> it's gonna happen, man. Shit, it's man. gonna happen. Oh, uh, like, like, it's, like everyone says it when you kick off about that. Like, what's the one that they've just had as well with that? It's a like royalty program. Uh, and oh, one. Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn. Yeah, I remember how that famous Somalian queen wasn't she? Ah, uh, like. Yeah, it's like stuff like that. Like that's dumb. Like, see, for example, if we made, oh, we're gonna we're gonna remake Zulu, but we're gonna make all the Zulus white. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> like you can't yeah. you can't do that. Like, it's the same as like if they remade Blade, or oh, we're gonna make him white or Asian. No, Blade's black. Leave it. Leave it the fucking way it is. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna remake like um, X for X Men, but we're not we're not gonna make Magneto Jewish, even though that's a central part of his character. Like, I'd be like, no, just leave it alone. Don't fucking do that. But it's just this whole, like, you can tell that they're just shoehorning this in. We're going to make a very famous, like, white like white queen played black by a black woman. And it's like, you, you're going out of your way just to rile shit. I think that's just the whole sort of, you know, generate controversy because it's free advertising. It, it almost seems like it, yeah. Like, I don't know if yeah. you ever watched that, um, what was it, Mary Queen of Scots, right? And it had... Um... That last from Suicide Squad in it. Fuck, what's her name? The Australian oh, actress. Um, well, anyway, it's, it's it's about Mary Queen of Scots, obviously. Um, and one of the the royal kind of ambassadors from England is a black guy, which absolutely wouldn't have happened back then. It just it would have been ridiculous. But like, apparently, the the director was just like, yeah, I don't want to work with an all-white cast. I want to have a bit of diversity there. And it's like, yeah, well, but you're making a historical drama. Like, you understand you're, you're meant to be somewhat accurate to what happens. She's like, yeah, I don't, I don't care. Well, here's here's what you do then. Don't make things during that fucking time period. I know. If, you, if you're not comfortable <laughs> doing that, then yeah. fuck off and do something else. Like, set something in, you know, the present day. You can do all that. But, like, yeah. It's just it's so frustrating, eh? Because like you bring it up and like suddenly you're portrayed as like being um you know some kind of bigot or whatever. And it's like no, I'm just like um, yeah. Know. If if see if it's a silly like dumb movie, then if it's something that's you know like crank or it's made to take the piss and it has that whole air about it, then I'd be like okay, I don't care. Like for yeah. example, remember that movie Meet the Spartans? Yeah, like, exactly. Was, like, something yeah, like there, that. Yeah, yeah. There was there was black people in that, and I'm like, man, I cannot believe this movie is not historically accurate. It said fucking. <laughs> No one yeah <laughs> right? so like see if it's like that then i don't care but see if it's for a certain period in history like see for example if they made a movie that was just about zulus because i've read i've read that people have sent me a lot of mad lads like recommendations and the zulus have done some fucking mental shit by the way that a lot of it is worthy of a movie see if they made a movie about zulus and they started casting like white people as the zulus i would tell them to get to fuck, fuck yeah i'm but... not interested yeah, the, the, let's the have, thing let's goes have, yeah. both ways, a hundred percent. And like you would just know, like you just be faithful to like the the real accuracy of of what happened back then. It goes both ways, but the problem is that the other way just doesn't happen. Like, no, no director or producer is going to like see if a rose. I clearly, I'm like no, no producer or director or anyone in Hollywood is going to do a Nelson Mandela biopic and cast Ethan Hawke. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> like no, no one's going to do that. Nobody's going to do it. But I mean, they are like Mal- <laughs> Malcolm X played by Toby Maguire or <laughs> some shit like that. Right. Yeah. Like that's not going to happen. But whereas they'll do it the other way around because they, I don't know, they go, ha this is funny. And it's like, well, I thought movies were supposed to make money if you're pissing loads of people off. Like the amount of times where I see that shit and go, I'm, I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah, because it's just it's not worth it, and it's the same with uh, you know they, they were talking about um, say recasting James Bond after the next movie, and yeah. it's like well we could we could have Ed, Idris Elba play it or we could have like uh, a woman do it. It's like yeah, but that's that's not the way the character is written, and I, I think the the woman who oversees the the James Bond movies summed it up best. She was like, look, if you want to write a great like female spy, go ahead and do it. But just don't try and repurpose an existing character and turn it into like a, a woman because it's just like you're you're giving her like a, a you know a second best kind of role. You've just like, yeah. you know compromised it to to suit that, and it's, it's, it's a shit thing to do. And it's she's people, exactly right. People aren't going off and just creating their own franchises or their own stories or their own characters or anything. People always want to turn the existing shit into what they want. And it's a case of well, this this isn't yours. If you want an all black cast or like you if you want an lgbt story or and go and fucking write it yeah. go and write it go and like find your own franchise or start something new but i think it's a case that they've tried to do that and it doesn't fucking sell because nobody wants it because that stuff's fucking terrible that, right but, you're right so, yeah and so, so the, the, the only way they can get in crutch. yeah yeah the only yeah. way they can get in is like right okay we'll just invade something else that people actually like and we'll turn it to our our own uh, purposes and it's it's such a horrible parasitic way of like making entertainment. You know, yeah. your, your your stuff that you produce should stand on its own merits, and if it has fuck all merits, then it doesn't deserve to to be made. Yeah, you know? that's that's exactly it. Like, if, if people like it, they like it and they watch it. But I, I think that whenever you go in and you start fucking around with people's franchises and stuff like that, it just kind of makes people hate you. It just kind of yeah. just yeah, I like. There are a lot of people I know that didn't used to be homophobes, but but they're getting, <laughs> but they're getting there. They're getting there. A lot, and the funny thing is, a lot of the people that are starting to sort of say some homophobic stuff are gay. <laughs> oh, man. It's just like I am sick of these types, and I'm like, but but you are one of those types. I am nothing like them. <laughs> okay, and you know you see it play out so often where it's like. Uh... You know, they take something that means a lot to you, like your favorite franchise. I guess it's happened to like Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever, um, yeah. and they, they they pervert it and and kind of ruin it. And the fans that have been fans for decades say like, "No, nah, like, can you fuck off and stop doing this to something that I love?" And they're, they're the ones that get labeled as like, you know, ah, oh, cry harder fanboy. You just can't stand to see things modernized. And it, it, you know it's the same kind yeah. of argument that gets used over and over again, and it's just so it's so frustrating because you just see the same cycle repeating, and it gradually just drives people away from everything that they used to like. It does. It's, I've I've seen it happen with a few things like Comics Gate happened, and that like put a lot of people off comics. It happened in Magic the Gathering as well, where they were saying where they they banned tons of ig- ignorant and racist cards, like one of the cards that was called Invoke Prejudice. <laughs> where you get to where you get to ban cards of a certain color, and basically there's figures on it like holding weapons, but they look exactly like the KKK. Right, right. But then I heard that the ban was coming, and I bought three of them, and they tripled in price. So thanks very much. Ah, joke on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I made money. I make money from racism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, but, but, but like that happened in Magic, and a lot of people were getting banned, and you're getting lots of like there was one person that for some reason went viral because on all of her all of her land cards she wrote trans rights and all and it's kind of like you're here to play magic the gathering i'm not i'm not here to talk politics i'm here to play cards but then it also happened in fucking uh dungeons and dragons as well where and that was the funniest one where they said orcs live in mud huts and they're prone to violence this is clearly yeah. an allegory for black people and it's like no wait a fucking minute this, this <laughs> says so much yeah. more about the person who said that than like yeah. the actual game like if, if you if you look at orcs and you think of black people you're the racist right like that and then what was the other one as well they tried apparently 
Warhammer were trying to do it, and I'm I'm interested. I love Warhammer as well, but I'm interested to see if it's possible at all for Warhammer to even go woke because the entire ethos of it is in Warhammer. There are no good guys. There there are no good guys in Warhammer. They don't exist. And basically, all of the Imperators and like the Space Marines all hail the Emperor, and they literally go throughout the entire universe exterminating everything that is not them. It's yeah. like all the, it's like Hitler's wet dream. This yeah, right? the, the, yeah. the Imperium of Man is like a, a kind of xenophobic, fascist, um, ultra religious, you know, God worshiping state. I don't. It's like I see when it comes to like you know the far right part of the political spectrum. I don't. I don't think there's any train stop after that destination. I think that that's the end point. How yeah. how how do you get more fast than that? <laughs> like, I, I've heard, and, and, yeah, because I've heard people say like, "Oh, they need to make the space marines more inclusive." You know, we need to have female space marines. And it's like, do, do you like, understand what these things are? They're not like they're not an inclusive organization. They're not humans in the normal sense. Yeah. They are there to like exterminate the worst of the worst, like the worst enemies of mankind. Yeah, it's well, just... it's, not, it's not even enemies. It's just even even if it's like even if it's like just a random race to discover, they're like, "Do you love the emperor? Who? Bang!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and it's sort of like people were trying to make that go woke, and I'm like, "How can you make that woke?" I'm sorry, like I don't even think it's possible. To make that go woke for a second, what they're going to do? They're going to make the Black Templars turn around and go, for the sake of diversity, maybe we should hold back a bit, brother. I know. I know. <laughs> like <that. laughs> like, we ought nah. to. We ought to be more tolerant. <laughs> <laughs> Hor Hor Horus now goes by they them, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't respect our pronouns. That's heresy, brother. Yeah. <laughs> the lacking civil war on. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, fuck me. The, the pronoun heresy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. God. Oh. Oh man, I feel like we've gone off on a tangent here. Oh, yeah, they Alien have... 3. <laughs> yeah, Alien 3. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um. <laughs> um... I mean, yeah, like when you, when when you have to sum up this movie, like in, in as its sum total, what's your what's your overall thoughts on it? Because well, I'll wait until you've spoken. Actually, I don't want to well, taint it or anything. I like the aesthetic of the movie, even though I made fun of it earlier and went like that. That you can tell this was made in the nineties and stuff like that. Like, see how the whole backdrop where. Instead of like an eerie dark like planet like LV four twenty six was, this is like a hot like leadworks foundry where there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot going on and you can tell the place is huge, right? And it has that sort of like industrial factory like aesthetic to it, which I, I did kind of like. So visually, I did like it apart from apart from the CGI of the alien. But as for how much it contributed to the overall alien story and Ripley's arc, I just don't think it did well. I yeah. just don't think it did well in it. I mean, it's a kind of fun movie, but out of out of you know, it's, it's at the bottom of the pile for when it comes to alien movies that I like. No, I'm kidding. Sorry, Resurrections at the bottom of the fucking pile. <sighs> Fuck me, oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole oh. other stream right there. The, re the, re the reason that I didn't really mention that throughout this is because I think I've sort of like, you know how like people that have been through traumatic events build like mental blocks to just sort of block <laughs> out things from ever happening. Like resurrection was so bad. <laughs> it was fucking terrible. It, it just, it was an unintentional comedy though. Like when the fucking like baby alien gets sucked out through that hole in the, the, the spaceship. And it, it all just kind of turns inside out, and then like, oh fucking Christ! Yeah, it was, it's just it was, ludicrous. It was the part where like they they clone they clone Ripley because they they apparently managed to get her DNA from the lead. Remember that part? They got her DNA from the lead she jumped into, and I'm like, oh well, that's really weird because there was tons of tools and shit in the fucking medical bay just down the hall <laughs> that yeah. you could have used it up, man. But it was like, and then when they cloned her, but they cloned her with the alien inside her chest ready to burst out and it's just like that's not how cloning works that's not how yeah. dna works <laughs> it's like, it, it, oh. 
But it's when you it's when you see all the failed clones and like they they start off as like this weird melding of like human and alien and then they uh, gradually get more sort of human like as they go. Uh, it's just a room full of Ricky Berwick, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! I'm just gonna get me demonetized for this even, shit. Even even <laughs> even I made myself feel bad for that joke. I'm, like, I'm sorry, Ricky. I'm sorry. We 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 love you, man. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know the bit right where they're they're playing basketball and Ron Perlman's like try to try to get the ball off rip plate and then she flings it over her shoulder and it goes right in the net. I doubt that she actually did that, and it wasn't She's done planned. it for real. I and she yeah. did it first time. Like the, that's why everyone just like breaks character and loses their shit because they're like, "What the fuck? Yeah. How did you do that?" <laughs> but then she couldn't yeah. do it again. Apparently, they're like, "Oh, we need to get a shot where like everyone stays in character, eh?" So we'll do it again. And then like she just couldn't nail it after that. Like did it like a hundred times, and they just failed every time. Like, fuck it out. Nah, it's, it's like. Alien Resurrection, I wouldn't even say it was like as far as you know, you can get a movie that's like dumb but it's fun, like it, it doesn't even have that. Although I'll admit, I'll admit the scene the scene with the little guy in the wheelchair, like slowly but surely putting together his little double barrel shotgun yeah. and all that, like that scene was a little bit funny. But it's when uh, the acid drips on his leg and obviously he's got no feelings, so he's like, uh, it's you know. Um, and then it hits and then it hits him in the ear and he's like yeah, oh, yeah he starts it, right? blasting away at this fucking thing like ah oh, you fucker <laughs> yeah um uh, it, was, it was a weird sort of movie eh, but just really out of place and i can't believe they got sigourney weaver to come back and do it like uh, whatever her paycheck was i hope it was fucking worth it man yeah that, that i don't know i think she's been out of work for a wee while it's been a wee while since like ghostbusters and all that shit as well yeah. yeah. Um but for for this one, I um visually like some of it's quite good. Like they they really nailed the whole like dirty, gritty, industrial look pretty yeah. well. You know, yeah. there's fucking everything's covered in fleas and everything's rusting and like the even the people, like a lot of them have got like scars and shit on their faces. Like they're all like, you know, just the kind of guys who are just scum at the ass end of nowhere. So all of that like works pretty well. But the the sort of tone of it is just so bleak and, and hopeless and and you know dark. You know, there's there's no sort of moment of like levity or anything like that. And it's just uh I just kind of weighs you down a little bit as the movie goes on. Um yeah. and I think the the sort of pacing of it is kind of slow initially and it's it's just very uh I just kind of a slog, really, and it just felt like such a an underwhelming way for for a character like Ripley to go out after everything that she'd done in Aliens. Just uh, it felt like a wasted opportunity. It really did. Yeah, there was some, there was some parts as well, like we talked about earlier, where she didn't really act like Ripley. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was a few things that she did that just didn't feel like things that she would do. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent, and it was all just in service of the plot rather than the characters. And uh, yeah, uh, it's a shame because, like I say, I think um, Sigourney Weaver actually gives a great performance. You know, when she's grieving over Newt getting killed and and all that stuff, and when she finds out that she's got the alien inside her, um, all of that stuff's really good. Like she's given it her best. It's just she's got kind of shit material to work with, eh? And it's just nah, it's a shame. Uh, nah, it was a shame. Like. I, w- I still wish Blom Camps would happen. Yeah, because I, th- I think that I think that would probably save the franchise if that was allowed to go ahead. And they brought they brought like back who they still have, like they brought back Hicks and Newt and stuff like that as well. Because Newt was drawn in the in the concept art as well. She was in there, but it was only for a wee bit. But they they drew the character thin, um, and the actress that played Newt is she's a she's a chunky woman now. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if it'd be a case of, you know, we can have you in the movie, but you know, good day, good day, hit the gym. As, as <laughs> far as I know, we, I mean, I imagine she's probably in her forties now, um, or around yeah. about. Um, she's not been in anything, any TV show, any other movies or anything. She did Aliens, and that was it. She just retired from acting. She's on uh, Cameo for some reason, though. Apparently, you can get her on Cameo. Really? 
Ah, uh, and she, people usually get her to say like quotes from Alien. Like they, they get her to say they mostly come out at night, mostly and like mostly. all that stuff. Ah, uh, uh, oh, fuck! I need to try and get her on this fucking podcast or whatever. Uh, she no. can go and talk to me. Like App- apparently, uh, she does talk about Alien sometimes, but apparently it's, it got to the point where it was all people wanted to talk to her about, and it annoyed her. <laughs> So she was like, I was in a movie like once when I was like eight years old. Like I've done so much more with my life since then. <laughs> I, I'm not, I, honestly, I'm not sure what else I would talk to her about. It's like you know, so what, what what do you get from the grocery store each week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, bye for the for me this movie. I was just um, I don't know when I when I look at it compared to what came after, like it's better than Alien Resurrection for sure. It, yeah. It's better than Prometheus and Alien Covenant because those movies are just pretentious shite, um, mm. and they were just frustrating as fuck to watch. Uh, but just uh, they fucked the canon up a good bit. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But just not a not a worthy follow up to Aliens, and just I like I say, it feels like a wasted opportunity. Yeah. And, uh, no, it does. Like, I would even, I would even accept like going on a completely different path with like Amanda Ripley, like Ripley's daughter. And everyone like see what they did yeah. with Isolation. See if they turned that into a movie or even a series or something like that. Like that would be like. There's a reason that the game did well. Like they get like see if they went down that path. That would have been fucking excellent. Yeah. And it's one of the things as well. I wouldn't accept a male lead in the Alien franchise. I wouldn't accept a male lead. I, I think it it just um yeah. I think it's got it's gotten that reputation and the yeah. you know, Ripley's gone down as one of the truly great um female archetypes of cinema. Like they, yeah. they just nailed it. And it's such a you know, it's like they they can't equal it even today. Like the, the, the examples that we always give is characters like Ripley or Sarah Connor, because they were absolutely brilliant, like so well written, so well acted. Um, and it's like they've never found a way to equal that again. Like, I, th- I, th- I think it's also because as well, there's like, see how the whole girl boss thing, well, I all right, the Mary Sue thing and everything, where girls turn in and go, don't you know that girls are strong too? <laughs> like, like that type of cringy stuff. Whereas with Ripley, it was real because it wasn't any of this bravado hoorah shit. Like she was shitting herself the entire time. Yeah. And that's what made it real. Like the bit in that famous bit in the lift where she's like duct taping the flamethrower to the pulse rifle scene. She's hyperventilating the entire time because she's fucking shitting herself. Yeah. And, and yeah. I was like, right, that's real, that's genuine and shit. Like, and it's not a case of, oh, I'm going to be brave or anything like that. Like, as soon as she flamethrowers all of the eggs and then runs, which is the smart thing to do. Yeah, like like that was why it felt real and it felt good. But like it wasn't the entire time. Like oh yeah, awesome girl boss, you slay queen. Yeah, like it was real because she was terrified. Well, I mean, the first time she uses the pulse rifle, like during that battle in the, the sort of control room, um, she she can't get it working initially. She's like yeah. the safety must be on or something. She's like, oh, what the fuck's wrong with you? And the aliens closing in on her. And she's like, oh fuck. You know, and she finally manages to squeeze off a burst from it, and it like knocks her back because she's not ready for it. Yeah. Because she's not trained, she's not a marine, she's not a fighter, you know. But she's yeah. she's doing what she can with with the, the the knowledge that she's got, and it's great. Like you say, like she's improvising this this uh, weapon where it's like a, a flamethrower and a pulse rifle like duct taped together because she's smart and she's resourceful, but she's not a, she's not a soldier or anything like that. She's just doing what she can, and she's going back to get newt because it's almost like a maternal instinct to protect. Newt yeah. becomes like a surrogate daughter to her, um, and again, that's a, a pretty important idea for like a female character. Yeah, but you know, and it's the same with uh, with Sarah Connor. You you see her in Terminator Two. You know, she's trying to protect her son John, partly because like he's going to be this important leader in the future, but partly because he's her son and she's she's his mother. You know, and she's willing to lay down her life to protect him, and that's a pretty like a important idea for a, a woman for a female character but it's like you can't you can't show that now you're not allowed to, to go into that because it's like it might alienate someone who's not a mum or something like that you know yeah most of most of the like strong female well, strong female leads that you get in the future don't exactly have kids because they all had abortions yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. well look at like did you watch uh did you watch terminator dark fate no 
the reason no, why oh, you, you spurred watch, yeah. yourself the oh, well you've spurred yourself some misery there but there's a bit where um fucking old 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 sarah connor is talking to like the the new batch of female heroes and she's like i you know us us women are just a womb to 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 bring forward these like male leaders you know that's all we are that's our only role and that's shit and i thought god what a way to destroy a character you know that yeah. was that was her thing but like it didn't diminish her in any way it made her amazing but they, they, that's the view that they take nowadays when they're writing characters like that and god it's so it's so weird and clinical and 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 you know distasteful it's, it's something i usually tune out like whenever I see stuff like that, like it's weird. I, I'll I'll disconnect or switch it off or anything. And I caught myself doing it the other day, where you know how there's a lot of controversy, like because Tarantino made some comments about Bruce Lee, saying, "Yeah, okay, he's very re well respected never in Hollywood, but he was kind of an asshole." Yeah, right. Um, and basically, Bruce Lee's daughter came out and made a response to Quentin Tarantino. So I was kind of like, I'm, I'm interested to, to see this so that I can get both sides. Because it was all things like, apparently he used to treat American stuntmen like shit. He had no respect for uh, them. I heard that. that like... he, he would hit them, on, He would hit, you know, when you're supposed to stop your fist to just, or punch at the side of the head to make it, because of the camera angle, it looks like you punch them. He would just punch them and all that. But uh, So basically, yeah, I was reading her response and I got a paragraph in where she says, Oh, yes, uh, I heard about Tarantino's comments, blah, blah, blah. And she says, one thing I am getting sick of is white men talking about my father. And I just went, yeah, close. I just closed the tab. As soon yeah. as I seen that, talking about white men, I just went, I'm not interested, immediately not interested now. It's probably wow. the right attitude to have. And, it, it, you yeah. know, what a, what a shitty attitude to have. It's like because you're, you're the wrong ethnicity or whatever, you can't have an opinion about something. Yeah. No, that's, like, that's one thing. Or, you, or you're not allowed to joke about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That's just annoying as fuck. Yeah. And you get that so much nowadays. And uh, like you say, I, you just you tune out from it. But at the same time, you want to be like, no, nah, like, fuck off. I want to like just verbally destroy you on this one and like prove how stupid you are. Yeah. It's, it's just there are times where like I'll, I'll, I'll argue too much on Twitter. I waste too much time doing it. It's like, it's like arguing with someone for the Westboro Baptist Church. Nothing you say is going to change their fucking mind. Yeah. And all that. But but yeah, I'm 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 arguing with them anyway, like for reasons unknown. Uh, it's just like I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that pisses me off. Like Hollywood is obviously circling the fucking drain. Like I can't even remember the last movie that I've seen. In fact, I can. Nineteen seventeen. Nineteen seventeen was fucking excellent. That was a good movie. That was a really fucking good. superb movie. And I like Dunkirk as well. I really enjoyed Dunkirk. But like apart from that, I can't really name anything decent that's came out. We we like, had a wee spell, right, where it was like Joker came out. That was really good. Joker was um, good. 1917, that was great. Ford versus Ferrari, just a, a nice old-fashioned, wholesome kind of movie. Really enjoyed I, that as well. Didn't see that one. Is that was that the one with Christian Bale? I, Christian Bale and Matt yeah. Damon, um, ah, really right. good film, uh, just well acted, well performed, and just like like I say, it feels like a kind of movie that would have been made in the 90s or something, like just yeah. not trying to put an agenda or whatever, just guys that are really fucking good at what they do, and, and they clash, and they, they have to work each other out and all that stuff, but like ultimately they come good, and it's just a, a good sort of feel-good movie, um, but I, apart from those, yeah, there's not much, man. Yeah. Well, I I did like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like I, but that was 2018, wasn't it? Aye, so, yeah. But, but I then Tarantino is a special case, isn't he? Because he works outside the system. Aye, he doesn't give a fuck, and it was just like there was a lot of. I will, I will admit, and and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like, see how I just watch movie and a movie, and I'm like that, ha ha, punches, guns, boom, ha, ha like that yeah. type of stuff. His stuff was a little bit on the nose with the whole like. Fucking hippies, and then flamethrower and her in the pool. <laughs> and, that and then he goes, "Are you guys okay? Yeah, but the fucking hippies aren't." <laughs> and, and it's sort of like, and, and the thing was like, the little spoiled, entitled, like college student teenagers, like talking about how these old white men have destroyed the country and all that shit. And then in the next scene, fucking Brad Pitt is crushing her face into the fucking mantelpiece. Yeah. <laughs> like that. And I was like, 
Um, usually I don't try and actively look out for these things, but I do think Tarantino's trying to tell us something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I think, and he's gone on a fucking rampage recently, eh? So, like, he's his, went, his feelings are clear. He's went against everyone. It's even been, like, the, the old, like, you know, conservative boomers that complain about the amount of violence and, like, sexy stuff in his movies and stuff like that as well. Like, have you so seen the one where the woman's shouting at him? They're on some talk show and they bring on, like, just some Karen. I don't even know who she is, but they, they're they talking about violence in the movies. She's like, why do you need so much blood and guts and violence in your films? And Tar- Tarantino just screams at her, because it's so much fun! <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah. Perfect Sorry. answer. The Perfect answer. And yeah, he's one of those guys, like, he's got fuck you money, he's reached that point in his life and his career, he doesn't need more of it, uh, and he can just say what he thinks. And I've got to respect the guy who he goes up against left and right, in the course yeah. of his life, you yeah, know, he does his own thing, and that's he's been he's been targeted by both since since the start of his career. He's been targeted by both of them. Yeah, um, and I don't know if you just reached that point where you're like, I'm fucking tired of fighting everyone. I'm tired of like arguing over stuff like this. I don't know. I mean, hopefully he keeps going. He keeps making more films, but I guess you'll see. Well, didn't didn't he have a set amount that he wanted to do? <sighs> I've I've heard that like I I don't know if uh, his next one's going to be his last. Like I'm sure I've heard this before, where it's like oh, I've got one more movie coming up, and then that's going to be it, and I'm done. I've, I've done everything I want to do. Yeah, the problem um, is he's he said that a couple of times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, I know it's heresy, but like I feel like his earlier stuff was his better stuff. Like he maybe peaked early, and like. You know, not that his later movies are shit or anything like that. They're just not quite at the same level for me. Yeah. Well, I thought the Hateful Eight. I, I did like the Hateful Eight. I would watch it again, but I, I don't know. It just didn't have that like major wow factor. Like I, I like Django. I thought Django was really, really good. Django was it, good. Um, yeah, Glorious Bastards was really good. I like yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. That was brilliant. Uh, Death Proof and stuff and Planet Terror, eh, not quite as much. Um, mm. And even Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it's very long and it's very like self-indulgent at times. A little yeah. bit, yeah, but there's there's some parts in it that I enjoy, like obviously with the, the bit where Cliff goes to like the Manson family thing and the guy <laughs> stabs, he stabs his tire and Cliff just absolutely caves his face in with one punch. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. I like I like that, but but I did I did like Django as well. Like Django was very very good because Django was just it was a great big pile of revenge porn. Like that yeah. that is what it was. Yeah, but but that was it was still good. I still enjoyed it because I thought that uh, DiCaprio playing Candy and that is some of the best acting that I've ever seen. The bit, yeah. the, the bit at the table where not even just because you know he, I know the whole he picks the picks the glass out his hand and all that stuff, but it was just that that scene just acting like I don't know it was it was weird for DiCaprio because he is a great actor, but I've never seen him act like that. Yeah, oh, it's um, it, it's funny when you you watch something like that, it almost takes you out of the film, um, and you're like, God, it feels like some uh, I'm watching something really different here. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a hard one to explain, but I, I kind of get what you're saying. Like, it's, it's not quite what he normally does. It's yeah. a grim fucking scene. It's a horrible scene. Yeah, <laughs> but but like, it's a great scene, but it's a fucking horrible scene. Yeah, it's yeah. what Tarantino does his best, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to say actually, like, I don't know, I don't know how much time you've got this evening, but we do have a, a few super chats there. Obviously, I come in as we've been doing this, so I'm sure Aye. quite a few of them are for you anyway. So, if you've got time, we can maybe go through a few of them. I go for it, man. All right, nice one. Uh, right, where did I get to? Uh, oh, yeah, Chuck Grable said, <laughs> President Whitmore, gentlemen, let's plow the road, USA. Fuck yeah. Uh, I because I did a review of Independence Day recently, it's like a total. Guilty oh. pleasure movie for me. I just can't help but love it. I haven't watched that in a very long time. It's it's still good, man. Like the the sequel was absolute trash, but like the the original oh, movie, no. it's just you can't help but enjoy it. It's definitely a different different era in Hollywood. Um, 
War Legion says, Hail Drinker, what is your favourite chewing the fat skills? I love Betty at the nursing home skits. <laughs> chewing the fat, it's got to be the last who's just like, Yes, I can definitely smell shite. Ah, oh, no, she was good. I liked the Neds just because it was silly and it was stupid. Like the Neds that just harassed everybody. He's a <laughs> gobble. <laughs> oh, man, dumb stuff. You like bunch that. of fannies. Ah, uh, it's like the bit where they were. What, what was the period where they were doing? They were harassing, like, see how like the nature country walking show guys, and they're like, ah, oh, so yes, you can drink from this stream. The water's so clean. And the camera yeah. looks up, and the two Neds are pushing in it up the top. <laughs> <laughs> so I found like, ah, uh, that was good. Because there's a bit where they're they're trying to fight them, and it's like, ah, oh, Angus, don't goad them. <laughs> 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 oh, the, 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 I chewing the fat was legendary back in the day. I love. Um, there was like two sewer workers, and like they're 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 just fucking about with like feces just floating by them, and one of them like flings one at the other guy, like I lands right on him. He's like, what? he just goes like, "What are you doing, you prick? I look like a bogged bastard." <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I missed the like, Remember the big man. I big big man. Man. Aye, what do you like my new boots? And it's just two boots with half bricks sellotape to them. <laughs> man. Oh. oh, the big man is great. It's like you go into a shop and just nick stuff and you'd be like, aye, the big man will be taking this. Aye, what was it? The, the, the fucking uh, loan shark thumbed up at a woman's funeral going like that. Your man owed me £10,000 and now that he's dead, that debt passes on to you. And the big man comes up to your lip. You're trying to you're trying to hoach money off a widow on the day of her husband's funeral. Is that what you're trying to do, wee man? And the guy's like, "No, big man, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, big man." And then, and then the guy walks away, and the woman's like, "Thanks, big man, no problem, doll. By the way, you now owe the big man ten thousand pounds." Everybody's known a guy like that, the way like everybody's known a big man. You know, I know, just I know, that guy, you I know. absolutely would never fuck with. I know a guy like that. He's in jail. Fuck <laughs> 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 me. Oh, man. Um, MB Zovic says, I need you to do a happy hour on Dirty Dancing. Who do you invite? <laughs> Fucking hell. That's uh, that's an interesting choice. Um, Stephen Lidato says, Al Pacino's speech in Ascent of a Woman, the best. I People were asking me what was my favourite speeches from movies. Um, and I, I mentioned Al Pacino from Any Given Sunday. That was a great speech. Uh, Mr. I, think I, like, I think I like Samuel Jackson in that movie, The Deep, right before the shark gets. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good death. Like. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Uh, I, they, they, they definitely had a sense of humour with that movie. Like, <laughs> uh, Mr. Herbert says, in an insane world, a sane man must appear insane. Uh, have a drink on me, drinker. Thank you very much, Mr. Herbert. Um, Shape Snatch gave me five euros, so thank you very much. Uh, just give me a second while I refresh it. I hate how you have to do this, eh? It's fucking, you always lose your place. Uh, all right, it's here somewhere. Fucking hell. Talk amongst yourselves for a few seconds. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. Uh, so, Nicho Forty K says, "Drinker and Dankula, what do you guys think of the most Scottish Chad moment in real life or fictional ever?" Right. So, what's the the most Chad Scottish moment you've ever seen in your life for real? For real, I've seen a, I've seen a couple of things, and it was like one one of the ones that was fucking funny. And this was years ago. This was in like the, the proper heyday of the Neds. I was probably about 16 or some shit. And this guy just comes on to the fucking train. The train to train for fucking uh, Blair Hill to Glasgow to, to Queen Street. And he got on at Easter House. <laughs> so that's so that so you already know how this is going. He sits down <laughs> on, he's wearing he's wearing a red Bergos and everything, right? And he sits down on the train and he just sparks up a fag. And the guy went like that. You're no fucking smoking on this train. Everybody in here is breathing your smoke. You know what, man? And the guy just ignores him and carries on smoke the fag, right? And, and it was like, the guy went like that. Everybody's breathing that in. Smoking kills. And the Ned turned around to the guy and went, and so they are, so fuck. <laughs> 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 
fuck that. It's just like the thing that was funny was like the the Ned. He just looked like a Ned. He didn't look hard at all, right? But as soon as they said that, the whole train just fucking erupted, fucking laughing. <laughs> and even and even he was looking at the train, just sort of going like, oh, "All right, fair enough." <laughs> just ah, oh, fucking that was funny as fuck, man. Some fucking wee Ned. <laughs> Jesus, I think my my favourite one was um, it was a night out in Edinburgh, and we were just like we we're making our way along, um, fucking not the Royal Mile, but like the, the one of the streets just back from that, heading towards a pub, and we we're just seeing this guy on the other side of the street, and he was heading towards a pub with purpose. You know, this guy's fucking like determined to get there, but he just like he must have had too many or something like that because he just turns without breaking stride and just goes and fucking throws up right over his shoulder, just carries on walking and then goes straight into the nearest pub and just carries on bevying. And I just love the fact that he didn't pause or anything. There was no inconvenience for him. He's just like, I need to throw up right now. And then on he goes. It's very, I mean, it. don't don't let it interfere with your day, man. That's a busy man. He's got things to do. He's got moves to make. That's a hustler. He's That's got a purpose. hustler right there. Yeah, man and on I just, a mission. I, I totally respected it because no, you know, most of the time when that happens to somebody, they double over or something, and that's them out of action for like you know the next hour or so. But this guy, yeah, yeah. nothing was getting in his way. He was getting to that fucking pub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck's sake! <laughs> uh, what's the next one here? Uh, well, Stephen Otten says, Hail Drinker and Count Dankula. In retrospect, I have the same issues everyone else has, but in 92, I was in a dark place personally and sort of grittier material. Uh, well, fucking Alien 3 is the movie for you then, if you're looking to embrace the darkness. Uh, Tyler Turner says, Hey, Drinker, what music are you listening to? Um, <laughs> fucking hell. Um, I've, I've, I've fucking I've developed a love for pirate metal, and so I, I love I love bands like Ailstorm. I'm going to be going to see them in I think November or December. They're playing over in Glasgow, so like that's the first gig I've been to in ages since the pandemic fucking hit. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, that, that that's what I'm in, that's what I'm enjoying at the moment. It's just upbeat, fun shit. I just enjoy it. Uh, I've, I've listened to a bit of Ailstorm. Tourist ass are quite good as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jonas Larson says, best anagram of Count Dankula. I don't I think there I, is one. I, 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 so, sometimes I register my name as Cunt Wankula on fucking things. Like, aye. Not bad. <laughs> Eddie from Outer Space says, horror movie recommendation, The Empty Man. Bad title though, but definitely worth a watch. Uh, I've never... Never seen that. Never heard of it. The Empty Man. Um, Thomas Chipperfield says, two of my favourite YouTubers, Drinker needs to play a young John Mason in the Rock prequel. <laughs> Please review The Rock, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I do love fucking Sean Connery in that. Like He's just, uh, he's a fucking legend. You know, Losers always whine about their best, but winners go home and fuck the prom queen. <laughs> <laughs> That is great fun movie. Like they just don't make films like that. Uh, James Foster says, "Would you Scott stop voting for the SNP? Otherwise, I'll commission Boris Johnson to rebuild Hadrian's Wall to get away from the authoritarians." I don't know, Dank. I thought you were a big fan of the SNP. I know you love Humza Yusuf. <laughs> oh yeah, he loves he loves me very very much. Um, but we're really on good speaking terms and stuff like that. I mean, uh, Nicola Sturgeon has blocked me on Twitter. Um, <laughs> She blocked me at five minutes to midnight on New Year, which means last... prob- which means probably her last act of 2020 was being angry at me, <laughs> 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 which which I enjoy. Hamza but... Yusuf, I'm not too worried about him anymore because he's now the health minister. Because and I, and I can't tell you how I know this. He was actually fired as the justice minister because his little hate crime law that he put through made us the most authoritarian part of Europe, only beaten by fucking Belarus. You know, the, the voters tend to not like that very much. So <laughs> so, so he, lo- he lost his job. Ah, <laughs> oh, Christ. Um, what's the next one here? Saint says, evening to both of you drunkards. Drinker, have you ever seen the 2016 slasher movie Hush? And if so, what are your thoughts? 
Uh, I haven't seen Hush, I'm afraid, so I, I don't have any thoughts on that one. I don't know if you've seen it, man. No, I think, I, I don't know if I've heard of it. Nah. All right. That doesn't make a deal. Uh, I always hate it. Like, fucking, I hate having to give that answer when it's like someone sent me a super chat. It's like, what do you think of this movie? Fucking never seen it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Thanks for the money, though. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm trying to dress <laughs> yeah. it up in some elaborate answer. It's like, well, you know, if I had seen it, this is how I would have felt. Um, <laughs> Rod Thunderheart says, Hey, Drinker, your favorite sports movies. Uh, my brother and I recently watched Major League and Necessary Roughness again. Uh, these are amazing. Um, ML uh, gets you cheering for underdogs. Um, Necessary Roughness has a score by Bill Conti. Well, that's always a good sign. Uh, wouldn't be made today. Um, I, I think for me, it's, it's going to be the Rocky movies. Um, any given Sunday, again, fucking love that movie. Um, yeah, probably those would be my, my sort of sporting choices. I don't know. Do you have any other ones, man? Not that I can even think of. No, like you know the movie where the the aim of the. Oh, I'll tell you what, I cool cool runnings. Cool runnings. <laughs> <laughs> That's I actually love that film, but I haven't seen that in years either, man. Fuck's sake. It's good fun. It's good fun. I remember that one. Right. Um, Ara last says, "Hail from Sweden, drinker, you eloquent something or other. Have you watched Grabbers yet?" Grabbers? Uh, nah. I don't know what that is. Sorry. Uh, fucking another one of those examples. Fucking never seen the film. Um, <laughs> Douglas Burton says, Alien 3 isn't good, but I felt like it was watching a lost classic when I rewatched it the other day, like Star Trek V, only because today's movies are that terrible. Um, this is what I wonder about, you know, do we get just really nostalgic for these older films and we're a bit more forgiven towards them now because of the shite that we have to endure these days? Um, or were they just shit to begin with? I don't know. I, well, I can remember, I, we were talking about this the other day because uh, I, I think it was a wee while ago we decided to rewatch it, the original like Mortal Kombat movie, right? Oh. I, I can remember that coming out in the, in the pictures, right? And I'm like, oh my God, mum, please. Please, can I go see that movie? I have, to, I have to go see this movie. And then I walked out. I walked out the cinema going, greatest thing I've ever seen. What a movie. <laughs> Fucking excellent. Fantastic. And then me and all my friends rewatched it. And we were like, like now all grown up and everything. And we were just like... This is fucking terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so there's but the one funny bit in it as well is the bit where Johnny Cage is down in like hell with Scorpion and he's looking around trying to find Scorpion. Then all of a sudden Scorpion's behind him and just goes, Welcome, and punches him in the face. Like, I, like watch that scene. Just watch the Johnny Cage and Scorpion fight scene. It's so it's so terrible that it's brilliant. Have you have you seen the new Mortal Kombat movie? No, I haven't, but I've heard lots of people shitting on it. Aye, it, it's, it's dumb as fuck, but uh, it delivers on the gore. I'll say that much. Like It keeps right. that spirit of Mortal Kombat going, but aye. There's no no plot to speak of. It's just people fucking killing each other. Right, aye. I had a few people saying shit like that. Uh, what's the next one here? Uh, Phil Moore says, did you watch the special edition with the extra footage? It helps tie things together with the plot and certain characters reasonably well. Aye, so this is the assembly cut of mm. Alien 3. Uh, obviously not the one that we talked about tonight, but I think we, we touched on it a little bit. Like, my yeah. feeling was it was it was kind of long and a bit bloated and, and you know, kind of slow paced. It did tie up a few plot ends, but I'm just, I, I don't know if it's worth that extra 30 minutes. Yeah, they'd also change the type of alien it was as well. Ah, because it came from a bull or an ox or something like that. Which... Yeah, and the face hugger for it was fucking giant as well. Yeah. Like, have you seen the scene where the guy's like holding it in the abattoir and the thing's fucking the size of him? Ah, I, yeah. I think because it's meant to be like a queen face hugger or something. So it's like a different yeah. breed almost. Ah, it's a bit of a weird one. Yeah. Um... Daniel Munro says, evening gents, having a few beers, so I might spam. I'm going to enjoy listening to you guys talk about Alien 3. Nice one, man. I hope you did enjoy it. Um, Michael S. Kura says, dear drinker, please review the lives of others. It's the story of a man who is part of the repressive machine of East Germany who finds his conscience and realizes he's not with the good guys. Uh, well, that'd be an interesting movie then. You wouldn't, get a, like... you wouldn't get a movie nowadays from Hollywood criticizing communism. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
Rod Thunderheart says, Major League Unnecessary Roughness. If you haven't seen them, you, uh, could you review them? You feel like uh, jumping up and cheering at the end of both movies. Fucking hell, that sounds good then. Um, Nick Salmon says, Hell Drinker and Dank together at last. This is going to be awesome. Dank, when is the next Mad Lad coming? I'm still here watching, bud. Uh, hope all is well. Uh, it's coming next week. I'm still I'm still setting up the new studio, but I did actually record it today. And it'll be it'll be going up next week. Nice. I uh, you got a, I, I saw your pictures on Twitter. Like the the studio that you're building looks awesome. And it's still it's still far from bloody finished. And it's like see because it's all I've been doing for like the last three weeks. I'm at the point where I'm like, just want to talk about it in case I fucking cry. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> I just want it to be over. <laughs> so much shit has went wrong. Like did you, I, I had a sheet of jet rock sitting on the floor on top of another sheet of jet rock. So there was that little, you know, just couple of centimeter gap and I was moving things and I just felt my foot go crunch. Uh, and, I, and I just went, I know, and okay, I'm not going to look. And I, but I looked and I just realized the whole top part snapped, fucking snapped it. So yeah, I, I shouted a few things and uh, yeah, let's just move on. Next super chat. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 47 says with the declining state of movies coming out drinker you're going to need something strong have something off the high shelf on me or blow it on tatiana i don't care <laughs> which would be very appreciative and that was 50 dollars, man so thank you very much um Stybeck b says will you be able to improvise cool epic speech right now whatever subject you want you can use help i can't improvise a cool inspirational speech off the top of my head man especially not after a few jack daniels so i cannot <laughs> help you there uh <laughs> no, fuck that. Um, George says, Dank, when you take power, I mean get elected, will you name Drinker Secretary of the Arts? Drinker, are you interested? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I want to be a patron of the arts. I would, yeah, patron, patron of the arts is sort of like every every single cabinet meeting. Like, I would like to make a complaint, Mr. Speaker. The man next to me has been drinking Jack Daniels out of the bottle since 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man. And he, keep, he keeps trying to fight me in the car park. <laughs> I think he may have actually shot himself at his desk. <laughs> it's just like you're sitting there, what are you talking about? I haven't been home. I've not moved from this chair for four days. Yeah. <laughs> I live here now. <laughs> I thought this was my toilet. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, Ivan K gave me a super sticker. So thank you very much, my friend. Um, Oki Watashi says, uh, could one of you not even have driven the 30 miles to the other's house, you lazy bastards? And thank <laughs> when next time I voted for you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, Turquoise Orm Z8 says, Drinker, keep in mind uh, of submarine war movies. I will. I'm planning to review Das Boot because I love that movie. Um, Durao On says, a new drinker is a fake Scott. Dank makes you sound like an American. Hail to the mad lad. <laughs> this is what too much uh, fucking working in a call center did for me back in the day. I, I, I learned to tone down my accent because you were speaking to people from all over the country and none of them could understand you. So I was like, oh man, I need to I need to like just have a generic accent. And just trying, gradually. They try and breed it out of you for some reason. Call centers are all over Scotland, even though we have one of the hardest accents to understand. It makes no yeah. fucking sense. Um, and I just love how you just didn't give a fuck and you just went straight for that that West Coast accent. <laughs> 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 That's a, I, I tone it down for my videos because it, it bothers some people. And I, I, I have had a lot of people in the comments going, I just switched it off because I can't understand a word he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> Oh well, sorry. <laughs> There's been a few a few uh, comments in chat where it's like, "Oh, can someone translate this into English, please?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rashley eighty nine says, "Sup, gents? Alien three. Not that it's flawless, but personally, I love that it's bleak as hell. I uh, feel like the setting does most of the work." Cheers. I mean, I, the the setting's de definitely atmospheric, and I, if you want a grim sort of pr prison environment, it's not a bad one. I just think the act the overall tone of the movie and how everything's just hopeless, everyone's going to die. That's, it does wear on you a little bit. I think yeah. Aliens had at least a little bit of hope. I think yeah. you need that. I think I think a part of it as well was like, oh, Bishop's coming with a drop ship, and it's like, oh, that's a good thing. But in Alien Three, it's the company's coming. It's like we're all fucked. 
<laughs> we're all we're all fucked. Like either way, doesn't matter what happens now. I've said this about horror films before, right? And I think what builds the tension is when you you offer your characters a way out, even if it's a bit of a long shot. It's like something that they're aiming towards, and it's like, oh, are they going to make it? Are they going to get this thing? Like, but the you know the threat, whatever it is, is closing in on them, and they're trying desperately to to do whatever they need to do in time. That yeah. generates a lot of tension because you you feel like they could almost make it, but maybe not. Uh, but if it's just like, yeah, everyone's fucked and they're all going to die, you're just like, yeah, well, I'm checked out then because I don't care. Like you've already yeah. told me that it's a pointless situation. Aye. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Monroe says in the extended version, the crazy guy escaped and let the alien out of the room. They've trapped it in. Uh, the fire scene yeah. is very different. I it's like we were talking about. Yeah. Um, Cody Griffin says, check out the audiobook script. It's got some of the best cast reading um, it, and it's what Alien 3 was supposed to be. Ripley spends most of it in a coma. Hi, <laughs> 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 fair enough. Um, Stephen Lanuto says, Alien 3, Ripley, and Sardo Numpsy shag just because. <laughs> fair enough. Eagle <laughs> um, Italia says, Vincent Ward's treatment. Uh, is that the first one? I can never, because so many fucking people wrote different... Uh, script treatments for this. Um, I know there was one where it was going to be like a, some kind of monastery planet where like everything was made out of wood and it was all like monks um, and it was all like super religious. Um, and then they got the prison idea and it's like, you know, you got like a hybrid sort of story. But yeah, I can't remember which one's which. Um, Big Dave K says, holy shit, my two favorite... Scottish YouTubers in one live stream. I've dreamt for this day for a long time. Sincerely, the hyena, hyena matter. Thanks, man. Um, Justin Babari says, Yo, Dank, glad to see you here. Hope you'll be back on EFAP soon as well. Hopefully I will be, because uh, I, had, I had fun last time. The EFAP goes on for a long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, the first time I did it, um, it was daylight when I started, the sunset, and it was fucking daylight again by the time I stopped. Like, I'd gone all through the night, and I'd, I'd drunk most of a bottle of Jack Daniels, and I was like, I need to fucking go to bed because I'm going to, like, shit myself or pass out or something. <laughs> uh, fucking hell, man. It's, uh, uh, it's pretty intense, but it's fun when it gets going. Like, uh, if you get the right mix of people in, it's, it's pretty good. Um Projects done poorly says two Scots at one at once must be a sign of you planning on making a move for independence. God. <laughs> <laughs> We're just planning on taking York again. Don't worry. Yeah, I will get there. Like we'll get there. Uh, Fight the club says my two favorite Scottish mad lads together. Can't wait. Drinker considering G Man lives. Avatar would love to see you and him chew the fat over hard boiled. Uh, I I've had him on a couple of times. We've usually done. Uh, sort of video game movies, but um, I, I'd be happy to have him on again, so see what he's up for. Um, Laughing Kudo says, Yo, Drinker and Dank, if I may, I want to recommend Netflix anime Godzilla Singularity Point. Uh, science talk is a bit rough, but I think it's pretty rad. <laughs> um, I've, I've not seen that. I don't know about you. No, nope, I've not heard of that, I don't think. All right. Um... It says Daniel Monroe says I hate it what the CGI in this movie did to the Alien franchise thereafter. Although I do like some of the low to high shots in the tunnels. Um, I see. I didn't like that. I didn't like seeing things from the aliens' point of view. I just thought it was really fucking cheesy. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit silly. And I'm uh, like, there was one bit where if they nailed the CGI, it would have looked good. You know how they were trying to trick it, go through the doors, and they had guys like sort of just hiding around the corner waiting for the alien to run past so that they could hit the door, mm -hmm. like to close it. There was a bit where the guy goes sprinting through and then the guy the guy who's hiding looks down and then closes his eyes and is shitting himself. And it's see the way the alien gallops past, but it, it's like a blink and you'll miss it because yeah. the alien's moving that fast, but it's loud as it goes past as well. Like I liked that, but that bit was actually like really good. It's just a shame that the rest of it was, you know, Terrible. I think it's any time when it's it's stationary. Yeah, and you see it like that. It's just like it looks really fucking fake. Yeah. Um, uh, Gerald Armstrong says uh, uh, you did the epic crossover with Dank. Why Alien Three? Talk about how Amazon is going to fuck up Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> happy to see this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they will. 
because yeah. I, I've fucking talked about this. Everything I've seen about it makes me think that that show's going to be absolute wank. I want I want to make a do like just get another company that does things like that, except instead of making everything all diversity inclusive, just make it racist. Yeah, I just want I just want I just want racist Gandalf. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not racist, Frodo. I just don't I just don't like them. I just don't. Like them. <laughs> 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 Haven't you ever noticed that they always? <laughs> <laughs> Despite making up thirteen percent of the population, Urukai and orcs. <laughs> yeah, they commit fifty percent of the crimes in the Shire. <laughs> oh, like, oh, uh, isn't it? Do you do you remember the days whenever you heard a season of N was coming out and you genuinely got excited? And now every time when it's like, oh, a new Lord of the Rings, oh, new Alien series. Everyone's automatic response now is it's going to be shit. They're going to fuck yeah. it up. Yeah. Like it's sad, but it's like there's no reason to get excited for fucking anything anymore because we've been shit on that much. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just, and it's particularly hard when it's something that you used to enjoy. You know, they've taken it over and they're just going to like inject whatever they want to inject into it. Um, yeah. Because you're just you're bracing yourself for disappointment, and it's ah, uh, it's fucking hard, eh? It's, um, it's, it's such a shame what they do to a lot of these franchises. Yeah. Uh, Wormy Spoon says, this alien will be perfect when it fits in a whammon. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't have enough gender diversity amongst the aliens, so I'm fucking offended. I'm triggered by that. Uh, the Gay Rascal says, the original script is also an audio drama on Audible. Excellent voice cast. Uh, sounds all right, then. Uh, Purple Brain says, did you read William Gibson's Alien 3 script? Uh, like I was saying earlier, I don't know what the different versions are, but like I've uh, I've heard about the ones where it was going to be a two-parter with Hicks and Ripley, but eventually teaming up, so all of that sounded pretty fucking good. Like um, Chris G Gagger Roshomo says, I still want to see Aliens versus Predator, Alien versus Riddick crossover. <laughs> Uh, just imagine Ripley, Riddick, and the Predator hunting an alien or even each other. Um, I want to see a crossover with Fast and the Furious so Dom can talk about family again. <laughs> you know what's stronger than aliens? Family. <laughs> so aliens technically have a very big family. They do. Oh, I, they do. Oh, that's fucking hive. <laughs> that's family versus family right there. Which one's stronger? Just fucking Dom driving a car right into an alien. The Queen chasing after a fucking souped up Dodge Ram or some shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, the dude. Rock just arm wrestling a, an alien. <laughs> it writes itself, dude. man. It really does. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Xander Dawson says, Cheer to my two favourite Scottish YouTubers. Drinker, I know you enjoy your bourbons. Have you ever tried Larceny? It's a wheat bourbon like Maker's Mark or uh, Pappy, uh, one of my go-to whiskies. I've never seen larceny over in this country, so I don't know if it's just a, a US one only. Um, but I would be happy to try it. Like like me a bourbon, so I do. What's uh, what's your drink of choice, man? Bucky. Ah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. It's like, the, the, I, I do have a cupboard full of whiskey in there, and my, my favourite is Bal Balvenie. I like, I like yeah, Balvenie. The, the double wood. I, I, I really like that one. That stuff's nectar. I can... The, the problem is, like, you see, once I open a bottle, I keep going because I'm like, this stuff is delicious. I can't see. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep going and going. So that's why whenever I'm on a night out and I want to actually have, like, energy to party and stuff like that, it's, it's Bucky. I still like Bucky. Bucky, I fucking classic. Like, that takes uh, me back to my high school days. <laughs> takes fucking, like, your, your stomach is just utter gut rot the next day. And then yeah. you do that. You do the famous like black tarry shite that you could fucking sell to Al Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man. But I, I still like it. It's it's called it's called wreck the house juice and commotion lotion for a fucking reason. Oh, man. I oh, Chris, so many lives have been ended because of Bucky. Like, oh, hi, so many relationships too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I remember. Uh... What was it back in the day that everyone drank? There was like uh, Omega and MD2020. MD2020. Oh, there was also cheap shite. 
what was the what was the fucking Merry Down? Merry Down was a fucking another one as well. Yes. Oh Christ, I've forgotten about that one. That that's still around. I seen it in a shop the other day, and I was like, "Is that fucking stuff still about as well?" And it is. Merry down. It comes in. It comes in a nicer bottle though, because I, I think they were concerned about the reputation that they were getting. <laughs> fucking know your know your audience. Like I know something that's cheap that will get you drunk. So it's, it's like even the even the monks that make the bucky you know where they're like, ah yes, praise Jesus, holy Christ, we are aware that our bottles are very often used as weapons. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, but no, we will not change the shape of them. To do so is against God. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I, it's weird out of all the drinks you could pick, just like that thing just caught on and it's just it's stayed ever since then. It's become like an institution. Appa- yeah. Apparently, it was something to do with ships. Apparently, Bucky, the, 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 the crates they used to come in were sealed by the monks themselves, and the monks didn't seal them properly. So, a lot of shipbuilders and all that would go like that. That crate's open. I'll just take one or two of those. Ah, really? <laughs> and all that. And then they passed around, and with all the ship workers and all that, it got popular. Word got around, and apparently, that's how it all started. Uh, it, it's. It's easy to drink. I'll say that. Like it's quite sweet, and I uh, just like I can see why. Like when we were all teenagers, like, it was just easy to drink. You know, just it's, it's very marmite though. With a lot of people, like I we we whenever I've had an event and everything, and like we've got friends for like America and Israel and like Australia and all that come over. We always go like try try the bucket, and it's always fifty fifty. People either fucking love it or you're getting everyone going like that. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's no metal ground. <laughs> uh, all right, next one is uh, Daniel Monroe says, I heard a theory it was Bishop that placed the egg in there. Apparently, he took it from the med lab in Aliens. I, it's, it's, uh, I think we, we talked about that a wee bit earlier. Um, he might well have done. Um, Neil Pedley says, The text in the final scene is perfect. Custodial presence terminated, remaining refining equipment to be sold as scrap. The closing sentiment is just one of a faceless, unaccountable capitalism. Uh, it's just a corporation. It's just it's just a sinister corporation that's just out for its own gain, and it, uh, humans are expendable. You know, if you want to read a political context into that, fine, go ahead. Like I could just see it as like your your just archetype of a, a, a evil company that's just out for profit. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, w- I would say it was more a message on unchecked power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diagoras the Mad says, a bit late in the stream, but so I'm behind. Um, as for your top five most inspiring, inspiring film speeches, uh, no JCD, <laughs> John Claude Van Damme from Street Fighter the movie. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can all go home. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time, but that's also a terrible fucking film. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so. It's beautifully terrible. Yeah. Just uh, watching, like, some, you know, watching a guy like uh, Raul Julia just acting the shit out of this terrible, terrible material, it's just incredible to watch. It's, 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 kind of, it's like the room where it's not a film that you would watch on your own, but if you watch it with friends, then it's amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember uh, there was a night we got back from the Edinburgh Festival, like, and it was about, you know, one in the morning. We got to my mate's flat and we were like, I'll put fucking Street Fighter the movie on. And we just watched that and just laughed our fucking arses off like the rest of the night. Pissed as a fart, but it's like the perfect way to enjoy that film. Yeah. Yeah. But like we've we've done like big movie watching and stuff like that. Like me and my friends all did the fucking Studio Ghibli. Tons of ones. Oh, yeah. like we, wa- we watched all the big ones, like Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, you know, all the all the big well known ones. And we went, let's let's find some wee ones that we haven't seen. And we went, oh the like there was Kiki's delivery service. We haven't watched that. Uh, stick stick that on. And then late on in the night, when everyone's like, we've been hitting the bong all day at this point, right? And then later on at night, someone goes, "Oh, what about this one, Grave of the Fireflies?" Whoa, uh, that's a and hard it, one to watch. And it's like at the end of the night, it's like five big, burly, tattooed, like bearded men, and we are all sitting on the couch, like. What the, f- what the fuck was that, man? Like, <laughs> man, like that movie just ruins you. It's, yeah. it's a, to be to be clear for anyone in the chat, 
It's, it's a fantastic movie. Grave of the Fireflies is superb, but not in the way that you think. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's such a... And then the, fun, the best part is at the end of it, based on a true story. Oh, great. That's, that's fantastic. That's actually happened. Wonderful. <laughs> I, that's the that's the funny thing with Studio Ghibli. Like most of their stuff is like this fantastical, you know, different universe thing where it's like you've got floating cities and all that stuff. But then they yeah, put out yeah. something like that where it's like, you know, based on historical events, and it's like fucking hell. Like it, it hits hard. It really does. Yeah. But like the, the this is what I love about these Japanese studios. Like they they really know how to wring the emotion out of you. Yeah. Yeah, they, they fuck me. Like, yeah, agree with that. I would advise everyone to watch it, but just only only do it if you are in a very good mood. Yeah, because like, you won't be by the end. No, no, you will not be. <laughs> no, fucking hell. Uh, Wormy Spoons says, things have got pretty bad for me. I have started drinking brake fluid. My friends say I have a problem, but I told them I can stop whenever I want. <laughs> That's right. You can stop. You just choose not to. Yeah. Um, RRTNZ says, Salutations, you suave Scottish scoundrels. Two recommendations this week. One, Banshee, the TV series, as many others have said. And two, um, Penderin Welsh Whiskey. The Bryn Terfel is a very smooth. Cheers. Fucking hell, I didn't know the Welsh people made whiskey. That's that's, uh, that's a new one on me, like. Never heard of it. I've not heard of that one either. Um this one, I'm going to butcher your name, but it's a Dithy Omurchi says, my username is Irish for David Murphy. Oh, well, that, that helps. Um, this, <laughs> fair enough. This is one of my most hated films of all time. I can't get over the deaths of Hicks, Newt, and Bishop. Might be better than Prometheus or Coven, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, fair man. Fair play, man. Um, Synth Addict says, good stuff. Since David Fincher had a terrible time with Aliens 3, his message in Fight Club is Tyler's crew is attacking a video store with a section of Alien 3 movies on the rack. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. I mean, I know Fincher disowned this film after after it was out. Um, he hated it that much. Um, and, you know, can't blame him. Like, if, it, if, he, if his vision was totally compromised and it wasn't the film he wanted to make, like, I can understand why he was pissed off with it. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, good enough. Jose Lugos uh, gave me a, a super sticker for $3, so thanks, man. Um, Nick B says, no freezers, no fucking ice cream, no rubbers, no women, no guns. All we got here is super chats. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's that's like, I like that. Uh, George says, what do aliens eat? Not people. They're incubators for chest bursters. Uh, LV-426 was a rock, so what do they eat? I don't know. That's one of the weird mysteries of the alien franchise because even in the first movie, the alien grows into the size of a man in the space of a few hours. No, they, they do eat. Apparently, they have something inside their body that's the equivalent of like an egg yolk. That's how whenever people are about to have the chest burst out of them, they're like really tired and like fatigued and everything, and they've got bags under the eyes. Basically, the chest buster is drawing everything it can out of them into like an internal yolk that it keeps inside itself, and it uses that for basic nutrients. Holy shit! Uh, and then it eats people as well. It will eat people at first, and then once it has all the energy it needs, it will start trying to capture people instead to cocoon them and put them in the hive. Makes sense. Ah, they put the thought into that one then. No. Uh, Daniel Monroe says, one of the best lines from Alien 3, you've been in my life so long I can't remember anything else. Uh, uh, that's when Ripley's yeah. gone down into the basement of this place to try and like provoke the alien. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't kill her because it knows there's a queen in her. Aye. Uh, and it's quite cool because they use that to their advantage at one point where like uh, Dylan's got Ripley in front of him and she, he's using her as like a human shield. Yeah, because uh, the alien won't attack her. Uh, it's it's also the same as well as when Ripley like points the flamethrower at the eggs. She like shows the uh, this is an aliens. She shows the queen what the flamethrower can do, mm -hmm. and then points it at the eggs. And the queen literally like calls off the two royal guards. Aye, like and that's basically because the the thing that matters most to the alien above all else is the survival of the hive, no matter the cost. 
So that's yeah. that's why that's that's the alien's biggest weakness, and that's the two times it's been used against it. I, I love that moment where they're trying to like back up out of that place, and like one of the eggs just starts to open up, and yeah. Ripley just kind of she, she just tilts her head a wee bit, like ah, oh, you fucking arsehole, and then just like flames everything, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> and then start, and then starts just grenading into the queen's egg sack, and it's just yeah. that moment. Even though, even though, like she fucks up the gun and she's terrified and all that shit. See that bit where she's just basically shotgun blasting like the fucking grenades into the egg sack that was i loved that bit that was oh, fucking excellent the, the, like aliens is just like the the gun porn in that movie is incredible because the pulse rifles are just amazing weapons like the noise they make that the huge yeah. muzzle flare you get off them they just look fucking beautiful um, and brilliant. seeing them like vaporizing aliens after alien it's just uh, it's great fun to watch like really is yeah, and I, I love that scene where Ripley's just she's unleashing all her fucking rage and fury and like um you know vengeance against this thing. She's just blasting apart all these eggs. Like she's not even thinking about what she's doing. She's just expending all her ammo because she's That's so that. furious. That is when the terror and like fear and everything leaves her. That's her big fuck this moment. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. she just goes, I have had enough. Yeah. I'm just going to mag dump everything I have in this. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's, just, it, it's like it, the movie gets you. It gives you that same emotional feeling of like, yeah, you're totally with her. You want her to just fucking decimate this place. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the thing is, there was a lot of characters and aliens that you liked and you cared about, especially fucking Hudson. Yeah. I fucking loved Hudson. He was, he was the best. He was probably the best part of it by the famous, you know, game over, man. Game over. Yeah. Oh, what a great was... arc he has, though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he yeah. starts off as, like, you know, he's a, he's a pretend badass. Like, he's, like, trying to pick himself up, you know. Meat, we've got meat, nice, meat tactical smart nukes, man. Uh, uh, he's, a, he's a total meathead at the start, but then later on he starts to... It's, it's weird. It's almost as if him realising the severity of the situation makes him go... Well, fuck! I better be a, a man and not some hoorah retard, yeah. <laughs> that man. And like he saves, he saves Newt for the chest. I love that bit where Newt's pushing the the cart against the wall that stuck the face hugger's tail, and yeah. the face hugger can't get to her. And it's just the way he just comes up and stomps the boot on it and just goes for the fucking. Uh, I love that bit. That bit's brilliant. Because you even hear him go like "fucking die," <laughs> like <laughs> blasting away. Fuck you, bitch! <laughs> but, I just because yeah. I I love the way he goes out as well. Like you know, he's he's just screaming at them like, "Ah, oh, come and get some, motherfucker!" Uh, and like I... one of them grabs him through the floor and it's pulling him down. And even then, he's fucking. He just angles the pulse rifle down and he just blasts away at this thing. And he's still screaming like, "Fuck you!" I, yeah. The thing I've seen the last couple of seconds just before he goes under, he actually does scream in fear, which is kind of like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like oh fuck. By yeah. the way, I've just I've just realised the time I was supposed to I was supposed to take the baby. <laughs> oh shit, man! <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. She's she's obviously being very very polite and not coming in, but I've got a feeling that she's going to be like lose track of time. Did you? When I walk in. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, man. Honestly, because I wasn't sure how much time you had for this, but um, like, I really appreciate you coming on for this tonight. It's it's been great to like finally do this and do a stream with you and to talk about a movie that we're both really interested in. Yeah, no, it was fun because I've people have been saying this to me for ages. Like, uh, oh, co collab, collab a drinker, collab a drinker, and all that, man. And I've never got around to it, but I'm happy we finally did because I had fun. This was good, man. Absolutely. Uh, I we'll, we'll do it again sometime for sure. No, definitely, man. Definitely, I'm up for that. But I'm yeah. going to bounce off just now. Thanks for having me. Peace out. See you later. Pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. Um, and for everyone who's watching, um, I've got a link to drink to um, Dank's channel um, in the, the chat. So um, please give him a, a subscribe because uh, he produces amazing content. Uh, but I, I, will, I will do my best to, to get through the Super Chats by myself. Um what's the next one here so uh jonathan hemlock says thanks for this guys i love what alien 3 could have been thoughts on vincent ward's greatest sci-fi never made uh, dark horse adaptation please um uh, yeah we were talking about the different versions of the script i think basically most of them would have been better than the final version that we got so 
Uh, damn, I wish we'd got to see that. I, I, I love the idea of like a a movie that focused on Hicks and then one that brought in Ripley later in the the story, and then they they did like a final one where it's like teaming up to to take on the alien threat. That would have been fucking great. Uh, when when you know Sigourney Weaver and um, and Michael Bain would have been young enough to do it. It's just such a shame we never got it. Um, Queen Nidus says, wasn't there a scene in Alien 3 where Ripley drops down a vent into a bunch of aliens and bangs one of them? I watched this as a kid, but I remember. <laughs> I don't remember that, man. Um, non Vite Rex says, is there any merit to the idea that more xenomorphs in the story makes them inherently less scary or threatening? Um, I don't know. I'm like, it, It's always proportional, isn't it? Because in the first one, you've got a bunch of people on a ship who are not soldiers, they're not prepared, and they don't have equipment, or they don't have weapons, really, and they've got one alien to deal with. Next time around, you've got a bunch of Marines where they've got all the firepower in the world. Um, you obviously need to bump up the number of aliens to make it proportional uh, and make them a threat. So individually, they become less of a threat, but like collectively, they become this wave that can overwhelm you. So I think it just depends on, on the nature of, of the resources you've got um and so that that's why it fluctuates and obviously you get back to alien 3 it's just a bunch of prisoners with no weapons so you've got one alien that can take them on but that's a threat to them so it's it's just all it's all dependent on the situation uh, big dave k says hot take alien isolation was the best aliens movie outside of the first two films and it wasn't even a movie yep absolutely captured the spirit of the first film 100 percent. great game um john sullivan says they vetoed uh, kinker sorry <laughs> Geiger's kinky chicken chest buster. The assembly cut is so much better, and I do recommend William Gibson's original little Alien 3 story on Amazon. There we go. Uh, yeah, the assembly cut is better overall. It's more complete, but fucking hell, it's long. Um, Lost for Words says, I think the setting of Alien 3 was promising and the cast was superb. The end result was disappointing. It was, and it was mostly studio interference um, and changing scripts that were just basically getting written on the fly. Uh, but yeah, the cast was fucking brilliant. Such a waste. Um, Rog H, give me a, a super sticker, so thank you. Um, James Scott says, what do you like to think of the Lovecraft themes in Alien? Um, I don't know if there's much of a Lovecraft theme to it. It's, um, it, it's, you know, it's definitely got a defined origin. It's not supernatural or anything like that. Um, it's not like a, a Cthulhu or anything. Um, so I never really took Lovecraft from it. Um, Douglas Burton says, Hail fellas, believe it or not, the Alien 3 soundtrack is excellent. I believe you, it is good. The soundtrack is is pretty evocative. Uh, it's just the rest of it that's shite. Um, Actioncom says, when it came to the first two movies, the studio did not know what they had. On this third one, they knew they had a franchise, and this is when they started to help the director with suggestions. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it was fucking terrible. Um, I think the the movie did suffer from like loads of scripting problems, and they were on a really tight deadline. So that explains why they interfered so much. Uh, but yeah, it absolutely was to the detriment of the movie. So yeah, real shame. Total compromised product that you had with this. Um, Jared Metheny says, "Any horror movies coming out for Drinker recommends?" Um, you have to bear with me. It'll probably be October when I do them because that's horror season. So. Yeah, there's definitely like horror movies that I've watched in my time that I've really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll definitely get into that in a few months. Um, a Terrence Federation citizen says, speaking of actors in movies they aren't known for, Jack Black was in Bruce Willis's the movie The Jack. <laughs> yeah, I remember him. Um, his arm is blown off by Bruce with the Russian um, HMG. Yeah, that that scene was fucking brutal, man. But uh, yeah, such a random appearance for Jack Black. Um, I did quite like the Jack, although I loved the fucking like remote controlled um, sniper cannon that they had. I thought that was fucking great. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll review it one day. Day of the Jackal was uh, was a great film, like the original one. Um, I think it was Michael Fox that played the 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 assassin. That was great as well. Um, Matthew Holloway says. Drinker, dank, I followed your work for years and I'm a huge fan. Either my channel's algorithm to death or it sucks. But I think it's time to scrap it and start over. 71 subs after six years. Any advice? The hollow net. Um, I would say start off with um, 
you know, when you're trying to grow your channel initially and get some initial traction, just find topics that are really in vogue at the time, something that's really popular and talk about it, and that will pick you up in the algorithm. Uh, and then just, yeah, focus on just producing the best possible videos that you can put put out, like the most insightful, the most intelligent, like critique you can give, anything like that. And if it's got merit, people will start to latch onto it and they'll share it and it'll go from there. But yeah, um, pick, po pick popular things and talk about them intelligently and you'll probably get a good start. Um, Daniel Monroe says, great stream drinks. I'm having a night of celebration while watching you two talk truth on a movie that never reached its potential. Top Thursday. Thanks, man. Uh, it was a great, great to have Dank on. I really enjoyed it. Um, Niels Olaf Leaf says, Dankula, love your content. Are you planning to doing, uh, on doing more stand-up comedy? And thank you, Drinker, for being a sexy voice of reason. <laughs> uh, Gil is charged. Uh, I don't know about Dank doing more stand-up comedy, but I hope he does because he's, he's fucking great. Uh, Actioncom says, would you consider uh, Alien 3 a UK movie? It's got a very heavy UK cast, and I think it was filmed at Pinewood Studios, so yeah, it kind of is. To be fair, Aliens was also filmed at Pinewood, which was really weird, um, because it was a mostly American cast and an American director, so yeah. Um, I don't know, but yeah. Uh, the Outcast Creative says, Danny Webb uh, Morse, we've worked together many times, told me all the horror stories of numerous conflicts on set, daily script rewrites, Pretty sure if I asked he could come on your channel for a chat, that would be fucking awesome. I'd love to have him on. Um, yeah, let me know because I'd love to talk to that guy. Uh, Lust for Words says, hi, Dankula. Congratulations. How's parenting? Uh, sorry, he's gone, but I'm, I'm going to just answer for him and say he's doing great. He loves being a dad. Uh, Griff Ryder says, Drinker, have you ever seen the movie Batteries Not Included? I think that would be a really good family fun uh, review. Uh, also, Alien 1 and 2 is great. Uh, 3, not so great. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Batteries Not Included. Yeah, great film. <laughs> I love that back in the day, like the little, uh, little robot spaceship things. Um, yeah, fun little 80s movie. I liked it. Uh, Jay Fraser 360 says, Hail Drinker and Dank. Cameron, I thought the decision to eliminate Newt, Hicks and Bishop was dumb. It was a huge slap in the face to the fans. Also, Cameron, why are the fans mad at Dark Fate? <laughs> yeah. There's no fucking way he supported Dark Fate. Not the guy that produced T2. I think he said what he was paid to say and that was pretty much it. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what the fuck he's doing with his career these days. It's all about the Avatar sequels that no one cares about. So fucking what a waste of his time. Imagine if James Cameron did back and did a ter sorry came back and did a Terminator movie. Fucking hell. Uh, Dick D. Normous, sorry, Dick C. Normous says, uh, so psyched for this conversation. So here's a super chat for my two favorite Scotsmen. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, Farewell Thunderchild says, defending Alien 3 uh, versus Pug video, which one will the Scottish government go after you more for? <laughs> also, Critical Drinker, Titan E, when no one guessed by, by a pleasure. <laughs> Cheers, man. It was great to have you on the other uh, week when we did um, Dog Soldiers. That was that was good fun. Um, also from, from Thunderchild says, be a pleasure, not by mistake, cost me two balls, <laughs> two pound balls. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, Shy Mask says, if it's true 85 was the pilot in Phantom Menace, then I read in a Star Wars magazine he also played the Trade Federation Viceroy and the pointy-headed master of the Jedi Council. Three roles, one movie. Fucking hell. Good going, man. I hope he got paid three times. Uh, ASMR Artist says, smart gun goes brrrr. Bah, <laughs> class. Indeed. Um, that's all you need. Guns firing. Um, Aaron Lysasek says, Drinker, you're the true hero of modern cinema. Thank you for all your honest, unfiltered reviews on the rubbish Hollywood dumps out far too often. You're not afraid to say what we're all thinking. Well, hopefully. Um, and, you know, it's it's kind of, for me, it's satisfying to just vent your frustrations about things um, and to know that people feel the same way. It's just really, like, rewarding. Um, and I think there's so many people out there that, don't get a chance to say all that stuff. So it's good to be able to put that into words, I guess. Um, Nerdrotics Humongous Back says, not aliens related, but the music that accompanied Pacino's speech in any given Sunday, piece by Paul Kelly, added to the epicness of that scene. It really did because it really builds slowly throughout the speech. Starts off really subdued, you barely hear it. And then by the end, it's this big rousing fucking orchestral score. I love it. 
Um, Alec Pantari says, the critical drinker. Cheers, mate. Love your opinions. Thank you. Uh, very much appreciated. What's the next one? Um, John Burns says, hey, guys, remember me? John Candy's wife in planes, trains, and automobiles. Thank God no one's made a prequel with her because now writing, Scott, writing sucks. <laughs> it does indeed. Uh, Ryan Grant says, a drinker of my uh, preferred pugnacious pugilist. Have a lag of villain on me. Thank you very much. I will. Uh, have you read the Dark Horse comics that takes the story to after Aliens? Do you think that's, this could have been adapted to a better sequel? Cheers. Uh, I haven't read it, but from what Dank was saying, it does sound a lot better. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to have seen that. Um, and I'd love to have seen the Blomkamp version. That would have been fucking great. Um, Jonathan Mulryan Mor says, uh, rumor has it Scarlett Johansson is to play Tatiana in the new drinker biopic. Uh, hashtag end sexualization. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, I would uh, I would start opposite Scarlett Johansson any day of the week. Scarlett, for me. We'll, we'll sort something out. Uh, J Fraser 360 says, Michael B. Bishop Wayland, android or human? He was human because you saw him getting injured and that was specifically so you could know that he was human. Um, so yeah, I don't doubt that he is the designer of the Bishop, Bishop android. Uh, Morrigan says, I've completely given up on Western media. Anime has actual heroes with actual stakes who actually learn, uh, fail and triumph. I can watch anime for days without a single reference to race, gender, or current year politics. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine just wanting to tell a fucking story that's actually fun and interesting. Uh, tell that to like modern comic book writers here in the, the West. Uh, that's why that's why anime and manga is just absolutely dominating now. Uh, Zethob GBR says, gentlemen, uh, Sunday, Italy or England? I think Italy's probably going to take it, to be fair. They're a better team. Uh, seeing them play Spain, like, man, they're so fucking fast on the ball. Like, they just never stop, and they just never seem to get tired either. So uh, I think they'll probably take it, but well done to England for getting to the final. Like, that's some achievement. Um, Diagoras the Mad says, the one time Dank isn't wearing his Wayland Yutani hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, OMG Puppies says, I have that fear about the upcoming Sandman series. American Gods was damaged by the screenwriters packing it with their politics. At least Sandman is being made in the UK and the casting seems okay. Um, something being made in the UK, I wouldn't count on that being non-woke because we've got a bad history with that over here. Um, John Burns says, I'd watch, just, I'd watch Justin Bieber as Nelson Mandela. <laughs> wouldn't you guys watch that movie? I fucking would. Sounds great. Uh, Lou the Toilet says, good evening from an Englishman across the pond. Good evening to you, sir. Uh, Vulcan of Nocturne, no good guys in uh, Warhammer. What about me, Dank? What about me? <laughs> <laughs> ah, poor Vulcan. Um, John Burns says, Blood Bowl is based on Warhammer 40k. There's an all-human team called the Rakeland Reavers. You should check out other team names. <laughs> ah, indeed. Um, Warhammer 40k being distinctly non-PC is great. Uh, Gen C says, the biggest question I've always had for this movie is why does the alien take days to burst out of Ripley? I don't know. I, I really meant to bring that up during the chat. Um, with most other people, the face hugger falls off them, and like within a couple of hours, they're they're done. The chest burster comes out. So I don't know why it takes so long with Ripley. Maybe because it's a queen, it takes longer to gestate. Uh, was it the drugs Clemens was giving her, or because she was in hypersleep? Uh, yeah, I think it's because it's a queen embryo, so it takes longer. Um, Big Al says, "Ahoy there, drinker! By Fight Club rules, if you could fight anyone, who would you fight?" I'm picking Greta Thunberg. Um, I would fight Karl Marx, um, and I said that on Twitter, and it and it got my my tweet um, pretty much banned because uh, apparently they they put um, a ban on on you taking his name in vain, which is really interesting when it comes to Twitter. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to punch the shit out of him. Uh, Striker A says Chaos Marines uh, use they them for pronouns it's for the Marine and all the demons possessing their bodies consuming their souls ultra progressive that's it Yeah, you just have to go to the Eye of Terror and it's super progressive there um, I'd also like to say if you worship Slanesh you probably are male and female and neither and both at the same time so uh, yeah then you know, there's definitely there's options for progressive people in the Warhammer 40k universe it's, it embraces everyone it's great um, Doge Whistle says, the alien actually isn't CGI. They use puppetry and green screen. Still doesn't make it any less shite, though. Uh, aye, fair play. Um, it definitely looks fake, that's for sure. Chester Bonaparte says, yep, 
your pair of wee neds saw the old British sitcom Bottom on Netflix the other day. Couldn't make that anymore. No fucking way could you make Bottom. Uh, just calling a woman a bird even. Yeah, none of it would be allowed. Um, Victor Tango Kilo says, would it be correct in assuming that In Bruges is a movie the drinker looks upon with favour? Worldsapartbooks.com. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, in Bruges is a decent movie, uh, solid writing and uh, yeah, well, well directed. So it's a good film. <clears throat> uh, Shy Mask says Ripley was the surprise hero of Alien and finished her arc in Aliens. If Alien Three had restarted the formula with new unsuspecting victims, it would have worked better. But they retconned her ending. Uh, pretty much, yeah. And it's a shame, really. Such a bad way for Ripley to go out. Mr. Nobody says, even the animatronic alien looked awful uh, versus one and two. Um, yeah, I think in, in one it was fine. Um, yeah, in fact, one and two it was all right for the most part. It was mostly just a guy in a suit. Um, I'm a. Ethan Mox says, Drinker, you absolute legend. Have you ever considered reviewing Black Rain? Terribly underrated and it seems right up your alley. Um, fuck. I have seen it. Uh, it never really occurred to me to review it, though, um, but I'd be up for doing it, for sure, at least on my second channel. Uh, JFraser360 says, Absolute mad, lads. Production hell. Every Werner Herzog and Klaus Kinsty collaboration. Dank, what is your next video, and would you do film reviews? Uh, yeah, so I can't answer that one, but yeah. Um, Werner Herzog is a fucking insane, either genius or lunatic. I don't know which one it is, but uh, he's got something about him. So it would be definitely interesting to talk about some of his movies. Uh, what's next? Yeah, John Burns says, have you guys done videos on the movie trailer Karen? Responses include, after watching the Karen trailer, Cats doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> I haven't I haven't reviewed it yet, but fucking hell. Like, yeah, that just seems terrible. Um, John Oakletree says, would the two of you speak English? Just kidding, for real. When is Lemmy joining the conversation? Have either of you read the Gibson script for Alien 3? <laughs> I've got to get fucking Lemmy in. Like, um, have either of you read the Gibson script? I've not read the whole script, no, so I couldn't comment on it. I just know the general outline. Uh, Daniel Munro says, Drinker and Dankula, if you want a new franchise with no walkness, can you can check out my book. That's why I'm celebrating, releasing on the 7th of September. Uh, congratulations. I... Uh, I wish you'd told us what your book is called so I could tell people. Um, John Burns says, so about the Crosby being released, that wasn't a black thing, right? <laughs> I have no fucking idea how he got out, but fair enough. Um, Canon Falderall says, Drinker and Dankula. Speaking of strong female leads, uh, how would you leave out, uh, how could you leave out the bride? Yeah, from Kill Bill. I haven't. I've done a video about her as well. Um, but yeah, fantastic character. Um, yeah. Awesomely done and great performance by Uma Thurman. Um, Matthew J. Killian says, can we get you two to debate who's more Scottish? Literally proving the no true Scotsman straw man rule. <laughs> I'll get the kilts on and fucking just flash everyone, see what happens. Um, yeah, I think Dank's more Scottish than me based on his accent. Like, it's stronger than mine. Uh, Andre Jones gave me $10, so thank you. Uh, Doug Keller says, Drinker and Dankula, what are your favourite movies starring Michael Caine? Uh, I love uh, Zulu and I love A Bridge Too Far, uh, both fantastic films and just, yeah, Michael Caine's just fucking awesome in it. Um, also, The Man Who Would Be King with Sean Connery. If you've got Michael Caine and Sean Connery in a movie, fucking hell, you're doing well. Uh, Holly Noonan uh, gave me a super sticker, so thank you. Uh, yet another response podcast says, we're actually covering this series on uh, Yarp and my question to you is, uh, is three worse than Covenant? Uh, no, Covenant's worse. Uh, I'd watch Alien 3 over Covenant any day of the week. Mike Cowley gave me a uh, five uh, £5 super chat, so thank you. Uh, Rob H says, Hail Drinker, recently quit my job, being enjoying my time catching up on your streams and watching movies that you've covered, hitting the weights, playing some games, and most importantly, drinking. You're doing all the important things in life, man, so keep it up. Nice one. Uh, Jory Helminen uh, gave me a super chat, so thank you, sir. Uh, Colin4486 says, balls or no balls on New Walk, Black Templars, Trans Space Marines. No balls means less weak spots. True, indeed. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the Black Templars would go in for that sort of thing, but uh, if, if so, go for it, man. Uh, 
The KC Surge says, Drinker, uh, do Bull Durham. Kevin Costner's I Believe in Speech is Perfection. Smart, funny sports film. Tim Robbins is awesome in it. Nice one. Um, X, sorry, ZXC 1972 says, Who has the better hate speech law, Scotland or Canada? I don't know. We're pretty woke over here, man, um, and very authoritarian. So I think we might, I think we might edge it out. Um, Jacob Trotton says it's a funking alien. I haven't played any of the games, uh, or sorry, have you played any of the games? I played a bit of Alien Isolation, and I was really surprised by how good it is. Really atmospheric, really well constructed, um, just good fun game. Um, Sorry, I'm just going back through the super chats here. I had to refresh it, so I'm trying to find my place again. Uh, Doug Keller says, "Evening, gents. Have you uh, have you guys seen the 1971 classic Straw Dogs? Uh, fuck, have I seen that?" If I have, it's been a long time ago. I, I probably not. I definitely couldn't comment on it. Um, so, yeah, I'd need to leave that one, unfortunately. Paul Montoya says, you guys are my favorite content creators. It's nice to uh, hear you guys talk movies, and I love the tangents you guys go on. <laughs> Cheers. I we were fucking all over the place tonight. It was great fun. Um, but thanks. I'm glad you appreciated it. Um, what's the next one here? Uh, Steve Murphy says, have either of you played the Blade Runner game on PC uh, released in the 90s? Yes, I have, and it was fucking great. Um, actually captured the feel of Blade Runner better than the Blade Runner 2049 and seriously underrated. No, it was really good. Um, it was The graphics were great. The, the feel was very much Blade Runner. Um, it was The audio was well performed, um, and it was a good sort of mystery kind of game to, to unravel. No, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, like you say, it's kind of underrated. Um, John Burns says the Rock is a James Bond movie. 007. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's a loads of theories out there that Mason is just a, a an older version of Bond, and I could totally go in with that. Uh, Richard Curtis says there's an alternative Alien Three novel coming out in August based on a screenplay by William Gibson. FYI, and oh, and Hale, and I've nearly finished Ryan Drake. Nine great stuff. Nice one. Uh, I'm glad you've enjoyed it, or I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. Um, James Foster says, thoughts on the new Lord of the Rings TV show? Looks like shite. Uh, yeah, not excited about it. John Burns says, great sport movie, slap shot, mid-70s hockey movie. Uh, in Grabbers, aliens invade Ireland, but they can't hold their liquor. The cast is hammered. <laughs> that sounds perfect then. <laughs> Uh, Krog Dog says, Critical Drinker, your review of The Island of Dr. Moreau was hilarious. <laughs> I, I wasn't even reviewing the movie. I was just talking about how insane it was to try and get the thing made. Um, Jacob Brim says, what are your thoughts on Halloween 2018 and the Kills trailer? Uh, do you like the old ones? Um, the the Halloween 2018 one I actually liked. I thought Jilly, Jamie Lee Curtis was good in it, um, and it was just a good old-fashioned slasher movie, so I was fine with it. Um Grace and Crease says, how do you Scottish gents have either of you uh, read or watched Black Lagoon? Interested in your takes on the series. Thanks from Nebraska. Um, I haven't, I'm afraid, mate. I don't know about Dank, but uh, I've not I've not watched that or read it, so I couldn't tell you. Um, Metalla says, plus one for Das Lieben, uh, Der Anderen, The Life of the Others. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Townsend, huge fan of both you and Dankula, and finally being able to catch up on a live stream. Keep up the great work, guys. Uh, on the Hay Club tonight, solid choice. Hay Club's no no bad drink at all. Um, Green Tree Ball says, "Hey, drinker, a great reviews, bro. Thanks, man. Uh, don't know if you caught my recommendation of Sisters Brothers, a uh, great new uh, Wild West movie, couple of years old, um, and an older one uh, just for kicks movie, Chopper classic." Um, Sisters Brothers, I've not seen that, so I don't know, man. But uh, if you're recommending it, fair play. Um, Chopper. I feel like I've seen that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's. I feel like it's a, kind of the periphery of my my mind right now, but I couldn't tell you much about it. Um, Infinity Flare says body horror suggestions. Society legendary climax. <laughs> nice. Uh, Loopy says is Dank a Who fan? The good stuff. I mean, obviously, uh, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. He's never spoken about it that I know of. Um, 
Um, Bruce Thompson says, Hey, drinker, have you ever seen Theatre of Blood? Give it a try. A washed up actor played by Vincent Price murders the critics who for years attacked his work by murdering them via Shakespeare's, or sorry, Shakespeare's bloodiest deaths. Fucking hell, I love that. Um, and yeah, he, Vincent Price was the man back in the day. Um, Andre Medelsky says, Hey, lads, since you mentioned the Cage versus Scorpion fight, I admit it's my favourite scene. Uh, and the best moment is when he makes them ex- explode, and there comes the cage sign poster, just fun as hell. <laughs> ah, it's good, like, it's so ridiculous, I love it. Uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, uh, Zeo. Th- so GBR says, Drinker, have you seen the series Wayne, a story about a brutal, psychotic, but big-hearted teenager going on a road trip with his uh, girl to find the stolen car of his dad? Sadly, there's only one season. Uh, no, I've never seen that, actually, but uh, sounds all right from what you're saying. Um, John Forrest says, Dank, this is a particularly fine single malt. Uh, prosecution, objection, Your Honor. Hi. <laughs> uh, Richard E. Normus says, go buy some water. Never! It's the devil's drink. Um, Andre Jones says, hey, Critical Drinker, you know you made me watch Dog Soldiers, right? Also, well met, Count Dankula. Well, if you watch Dog Soldiers, your life is better for it, so I'll accept your thanks. Uh, Brian Robinson says, cheers from Maryland in the States. Can understand your accents just fine through my redneck filler. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Um... Evil Zombie Toe says, Drinker um, and Dank, uh, if there can be only one, who wins? I don't know. I think the only sensible way is to dress us up both in kilts, give us a broadsword, and we'll just go at it and see who, who emerges triumphant. Um, and Caveman Dave says, Grabbers, being from Ireland, Drinker, I'm obliged to recommend this movie. A small Irish village is invaded by aliens. Think Independence Day, but instead of a virus, it's 10 glass, uh, 10 glass of Morgan's. I fucking it's got to be drinking when it's Ireland like love it um, I'm just kind of looking at the, the super chats to be honest with you guys um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get through all of them tonight because they're they're coming in as fast as I can respond to them and it's getting pretty early in the AM for me uh, what I'll probably do is like a, a stream tomorrow where I'll do like a super chat square up and answer all the remaining ones uh, but I think I, I don't want to keep going with it tonight and end up glossing over them because like people are obviously putting in the time to to send me these things. So I want to give them proper answers. So I uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll do a second stream tomorrow just to finish up all the questions um, rather than you know keeping it going tonight because I'm fucking tired and drunk and I need to sleep. I was up till fucking stupid o'clock last night as well, and I'm going to be doing Friday night night. Friday night tights tomorrow night, so I need to at least get some sleep before that. Um, but yeah, I just want to say to you guys, like, I, I really appreciate all of these super chats. I appreciate everyone in chat keeping all this going. Um, and hopefully, we were able to give you a, a good stream tonight and make it kind of entertaining. It's been great for me. I love talking to Dank, so hopefully, I'll have him back on again. Um, and yeah, like I say, I'll, uh, I'll answer all of the remaining Super Chats tomorrow and I'll re-upload all of these um, streams onto my second channel so you don't miss any of it. Um, but yeah, uh, I think for tonight, that, that's all I can fucking get through. I need to I need to quit for now. <laughs> um, but I just want to say, like, thanks very much. And uh, that is all I've got for tonight. So I am going to go away now. <laughs>